What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Valvoline, the original motor oil. That's right, Valvoline was and is America's first ever motor oil brand. For 150 years, they've been innovating, creating, and reinventing the idea of motor oil. From the first high mileage to the first synthetic to the first racing oil, they've never stopped pursuing innovation to maximize engine life. And their latest innovation, Extended Protection Full Synthetic Motor Oil, provides 50% better wear protection than industry standards and is 10 times stronger against oil breakdown. Valvoline Extended Protection is specifically formulated with dual defense additive technology, which combines an innovative additive boosted with a fortified detergent system. You may not think you're a severe driver, but short trips, towing, extreme temperatures, turbo charged engines, heavy loads, and spirited drives put extra pressure on your engine. And people like Chris Forsberg, Rob Dom, Tavarish, Speed Academy, Gears and Gasoline, Dustin Williams, and TJ Hunt all trust Valvoline in their cars. They're the only motor oil with a dedicated engine lab where they can run specialized engine tests and standardized engine tests right in their own facility. Valvoline is also the world's number one supplier of EV battery fluids, offering tailored products to help extend vehicle range and efficiency. Valvoline is proud to be the official motor oil of Hendrick Motorsports, and this year, Valvoline driver Kyle Larson was crowned the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series regular season champion with nine wins and 2,000 laps led. If it's good enough for these folks, certainly good enough for your daily driver or weekend sports car. So go to your local auto parts store and ask for Valvoline by name. And that's since that's our only advertisement this week, I want to remind you guys that All Cars Go to Heaven 3 is available on our YouTube channel uh, in partnership with eBay Motors. Zach and I worked to find out if we could build a better enthusiast crossover for under 10000 bucks in cars and parts on eBay Motors. It's a really fun series. We got a rally stage. We got a racetrack. We went camping. We cooked with our cars. All kinds of fun activities. Uh, if you didn't get it in your notifications, you're not alone. That seems to have happened. So go over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the smoking tire. And there's an all cars go to heaven playlist right there with not only all four episodes of our current series, but our all cars go to heaven one and two feature length films available for free on YouTube. That's all cars go to heaven one, two, and now three available for free on our YouTube channel. Please go check them out. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, the whole deal. Alrighty then, on this episode of the podcast, our pal Doug DeMuro is back in studio. Uh, Doug is needs very little introduction. He is the highest uh, subscribed, most watched car reviewer on YouTube. Uh, we have a lot of respect for what he does, and uh, he's an interesting character. He has strong opinions. He has a lot of experience, and uh, we go all over the place. We talk about YouTube. We talk about cars. We talk about Nantucket. We talk about dogs. We talk about everything. In fact, this is our longest podcast of the year, and it's Doug DeMuro on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Welcome back. It's Thank nice you. to see you. I'm Thank glad you. you made it. Yeah. I was tired of doing Zoom shows with you. It was oh fucking my God. boring. I know. <laughs> I'm over that. I'm, I mean, we're going to, you know where we're going. I know. It's going to fucking be back that. If in, this had been two weeks from now, I think we'd be. I, dude, I'm, I'm concerned. Yeah. I'm getting a little nervous, you yeah. know, especially because like. I don't know. It's like, especially because once you, once you got your boosters, you do all the, you know, symptoms are mild, right? right. So every little, oh, oh shit, right, right. Is that <laughs> especially it? if you're already prone to anxiety like I am, right. Every little, like yeah. last night, I'm driving home, and uh, and I'm wearing like a, a t-shirt hoodie, yeah, and the the neck was just choke. The neck was just pressing my larynx just right. a little bit, <laughs> and I got a little tickle. Just a little tickle. And I right. went, ah, ah, ah. and Hannah looks over at me like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> it is. That's what I'm thinking now, though. It's scary. And especially because we have a little baby, and so everything is even more scary. Yeah. Because I'm not too worried about myself because I'm boosted. And, but I'm a I'm little more worried I'm not worried about, about myself. Him. I'm worried about my schedule. I'm worried yeah. about my life getting f I'm worried about all the people I might have to call if yeah. I tell. Like, because we're sympathetic 
people. We are we right. have concern for others. Right. You know, I, my brother in law who is recovering from cancer uh, from leukemia. By the way, uh, people have donated uh, be the match dot com. You do, you know about donating bone <laughs> marrow right now? They don't drill your bones anymore. To donate bone marrow to be a donor and stem cells for someone with leukemia, it's a blood draw. That's it. Hmm. And they can they can draw stem cells and they spin it up in a centrifuge and then they just IV that shit. There's no more. So my brother-in-law, Hannah, my wife, was a perfect match. Oh. Perfect. So she donated yeah. and he now has 100% her immune system. Oh, you're so kidding. the la- most recent test came back, no cancer, Zero cancer. Fantastic. And wow. 100% Hannah's immune system. So wow. he gets her allergies. Like oh, he's now no allergic. Way. He's now allergic to shellfish. Oh. Because she is. It's crazy. It's really, really weird. But donate it. Sign up to be at Be the Match because donating, if you're a match for somebody, the process of donating is like as painless as one needle. You're That's kidding. it. That's the whole shit. Huh. So a lot of people have hit us up after I talked about it and said that they signed up uh, at, at BeTheMatch.com, and, and uh, it's very, very easy. Interesting. But, huh. but that makes us nervous because he he's yeah. starting over. He's got no vaccinations of any kind. Oh. Forget COVID. He's like a baby. Right. So he's got to go do all that. He's, yeah, over the next year, he has to slowly right. re, Learn to re-vaccinate. Walk again. <laughs> right. Read. <laughs> He kind of, well, I mean, walking's like, I, as soon as I said, I'm like, that actually might be a problem because his muscles probably atrophy a lot. That is but, actually yeah. kind of true. Yeah. They say like every day in a hospital bed is a week of recovery hmm. from a muscle perspective. You're mm-hmm. kidding. And he was in a hospital for 96 days. Oh. It's two fucking years of recovery. Wow. So yeah, he's, yeah, he moves a little slow. But wow. it's okay. He's, he's doing well. But anyway, that's a that's a hard left. But that's the fucking the, right. the fear, you know. Right, and everybody's and got something like that. Everyone's you know, and even like if they that. think they don't. Yeah, it's like the worst version of six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, six degrees of I'm sorry, I've tested positive. Right. <laughs> Everyone knows someone. Yeah. Yeah. It's happening more and more though. People are. Everybody's going to get it. I have it's eighty percent transmission that. on the right. It's it's. I'm trying to not. Yeah. I'm still trying to not. Cory Booker and Elizabeth Warren, you see both of them I, yesterday? Yeah, I did. Now, what, oh, this, oh, the whole Senate, they'll just all fucking have it. Yeah. But uh, you avoided it by driving across the country five times this, this yeah. year. Yeah. How many times did you drive to Nantucket? I drove in the winter there and back, and I drove in the summer there and back. Cool. It's such a long drive. It's, it's crazy. But, but don't And don't you guys kind of like cannonball it almost? Like you don't really do a lot of stop. I don't take people with me anymore because I just go. I do like 18-hour well, your, your, days. Your missus goes with you, though, She right? flies. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't need her slowing me down. She was pregnant this summer, and you know, <clears throat> pregnant women, they they're, they're peeing every thirty seconds. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I wouldn't deal with that. So <laughs> it's me and the dog. The dog doesn't mind. He just sits in the car for eighteen hours. Wow. And we just go and stop. I only stop. I think, and I got to try it this summer. But I think I, I, I have a friend in Washington D.C. who I go to first. I pick her up, and then mm-hmm. we go the rest of the way. But I think I could get from D.C. to San Diego in two days. I mean, you could. You can. It's just not fun. I know the JF. We did it in two days, but yeah. it was a, it was blasting. It's yeah. You got to go fast, and it's quite a trip. But the time is on your side because the time zones are going the right True. direction. If you're coming west, if you're coming yeah, west, yeah, you yeah. can't yeah. do it if you're going east. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just that's such a long time in the car. Yeah. I mean, the the, the that Defender has has really nice seats. It's a good place to spend yeah. a bunch of time. Yeah, yeah. It does, and it is, but. Uh, Still, it's a long time in yeah, the car. No. But I can't. They, they don't let the dog fly. Oh. This is the thing that, that that the airlines need to figure out is allowing dogs on airplanes. Wait. Right. What do you mean? They don't. The dog is too big to go in. Little the dogs, they let they let them on. Yeah. Right. But a dog. My dog is a normal, mid-sized, thirty, forty-pound dog. You know, like a Camry of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't let them. They don't let them on. And I want to be able to buy him a seat, and you can't do that. Oh right! If if there are a certain level of service dog, they can be like at your feet, even if the golden tree or something. You want to do the whole service but dog, it's, but it's difficult. No, no, I'm not. It's I know it's really difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, oh, so that's a it's a cargo hold situation. That and also we carry we're out there for like two months, so we carry a bunch of stuff. I mean, oh. even if I didn't have the dog, I'd probably still drive because we have so. I mean, imagine trying to go somewhere for two months. With, you got yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, hey man, just do what you got to do. Yeah. Just it's just a lot of fucking time in the yeah. car. It's a lot of time. How many miles are on that fuck? Are you at fifty thousand miles in that thing? Twenty five. Just hit twenty five thousand way up here. And that's wow. in one. But year. I've had the car for a year. That's one year. Wow. That's yeah. a lot. I mean, for someone who drives a lot of different cars, to have I know twenty five thousand miles on your own car in and one year. And you know what the craziest insane. part is? You know what it's worth? What I paid for it. <laughs> really? <laughs> Pretty much. A little less. Oh my god! Dump it. 
<laughs> no, Are you I kidding like that me? Car. You twenty five thousand <clears throat> free miles in a Land Rover? I know. Dump it. I'll never have that opportunity Dump again. It. <laughs> but what am I going to get? Buy something else for fifteen over? Everything's expensive. Someone won't sell you a, de- a Defender for sticker right now. You just get another one. My dealer won't. Really? They're saying they're getting twenty twenty five over. <laughs> Maybe for me they get because I bought a couple, you know, a car from them and service there, or whatever. Maybe they give me fifteen over. Wow. Dude, Corey Burns a was deal. looking at Maverick. They wanted forty grand. 20 for they, the they base 15 Maver- over sticker on a Maverick. Over for a Maverick. So a Maverick, Maverick that should be 25 grand when that's its big selling point is like no 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 that's a $40,000. You've now. seen that vi- image that went viral of that Toyota dealer in Oakland that wanted 90 or whatever for yeah, a RAV4 yeah. Prime. And then they they backtracked on it. Oh, they, did they? They backtracked. They said it was a uh it, the, the, the the comma was they only wanted 4 over not 40 over. <laughs> but it was but the rest of the sure, math the, for four over. But the rest of the math added up yeah, as yeah, if it course. was 40. Yeah, they fully they Those fully backtracked. Those are super desirable. In fact, on the my cross country trip that RAV4 Prime that plug-in one I was driving through Nashville and I saw one crashed, like it had been an accident on the side of the road and the police were there and everything. And I was felt so bad for the dude. I'm like, you're never going to find another. <laughs> <You're screwed." laughs> I probably waited a year for that thing. Why are they so desirable? The plug in RAV4s, everybody but, wants but one. But who gives a shit? It's well, a RAV4. You say that, but go to the Bay Area. Everybody wants electric cars. RAV4 is the car, is like the normal car that everybody wants. The combination of the two is insane. Those cars are so hot, the RAV4 Prime. That's, so hot. That's insane. It's the perfect Venn diagram of reliable company, plug in hybrid crossover. Yeah, we and got, there's not a lot of plug-in crossovers. We got a right? RAV4, which we used for All Cars Go to Heaven 3. And Toyota, to their credit, were very good sports about the whole thing. Yeah. We told them, we were like, we're making a film making fun of crossovers. May we have a RAV4? <laughs> and they were like, actually, that sounds fun. And so they gave us one. It yeah. was a TRD. Yeah. It was $42,000 sticker, four-cylinder, CVT fucking RAV4. <laughs> yeah. And there was absolute. It was fine. Don't get me wrong. It was fine, but there was absolutely nothing about this that was like, oh yeah, this yeah. is the thing. Yeah. Nothing. Right. Nothing but at most all. Most people don't people want. want. Yeah, exactly. They just want something that does all the things. But they that's want the, to but, do. but to pay over for that, to pay an enormous premium for it's something insane. that's just, eh, okay. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. It's insane. I can't believe people do it. People fact, do it. For the though. same money, the Outback Wilderness was a much, much nicer thing. I think. I've been seeing a bunch of those on the road, too. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're kind of yeah. cool. You're not looking. into it? A little weird looking. They're a little weird looking. The, the Fender things. You know? Yeah, yeah, no. The, 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 the RAV4 has those. The RAV4, the TRD the TRD RAV4's yeah. got them, too. The TRD RAV4. I mean, it's the only one we had. What do you want me to tell you? Right. <laughs> the new fucking uh, WRX has them, too. God, I reviewed that. I just reviewed that. It went live today. We got to call Subaru and get one on the schedule for January. I went up there to Northern California. That was uh, that car surprised me quite a bit. It was much better than I thought it would be. Jason Camisa's Instagram review, which I read in bed this morning, was uh, for Camisa, who was incredibly critical. You know, he's he's he gets down on shit pretty hard. He was pretty optimistic. I'll about tell you, it I went up there expecting to say that it was a it's a horrible car because it's heinously ugly and it has the same horsepower as the old one. I didn't think that. It is heinously ugly still. Is it? But the biggest mistake they made was revealing that car in orange. Yeah. Because it just accentuates the heinousness. If it was just gray or something. <laughs> and black. It yeah. actually looks dark. The blue, the World Rally blue, there's a dark blue also. You don't really see the fenders at that point. Then it becomes a question of just the power. But honestly, I thought it was a great engine. I like, like that engine in the Ascent, and it, it's even better when you got a manual transmission. And, yeah. Like my Volt, when I had a, a first gen Volt, I forgot about you that. had to get it in black because it hid that weird window surround they did any other color was like what have you done here right but in black it just looked normal you right. know it was yeah. fine yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah orange is wrong orange is wrong for this car yeah. it's wrong for most right. cars but the, it's it, that, what they told me was it's a new color and so they wanted to mm-hmm. make it oh look at yeah right yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, it does not. No one's going to be see, getting it. See, great. look how much yeah, more mag- it hides mag- it. So then the mag- styling is less gray. of an issue, yeah. and it's more of just a question of like the performance stuff. But I thought it drove great. I was really impressed with it. And I really wasn't the, expecting uh, to. You see the bug eye sold for thirty three grand on Brigger Trailer yesterday? <laughs> I loved those cars, though. I don't, I don't think that that's insane. You don't? When I was a kid, I wanted nothing more than that car. I begged my parents, please. It was twenty three nine ninety five. That was the base price, and I begged my parents. I said, "Please get me an O two WRX. I would give anything." And instead, I got a fifteen year old used Volvo. And I don't think that a WRX was ever even a possibility. I don't yeah. know why I thought that that was something, but God, I wanted that car so much. And I get it now. Like I would, if I had a ton of money, I would be interested in you reliving see, I, my youth. The, the reason I don't think it's worthwhile is because you can get a better version of the same experience 
like now. I like know. It's still a turbo flat four. It's still like it's the formula. It's not like with BMW where what they're selling now is so much different from what they were selling then. Can I offer a counterpoint? Yeah. Uh, Notch Mustang. Like you could get, you could have bought a SN95 Mustang GT or the S197. Like yeah. all those did the same thing that yours did better, but you love that one. I paid it. Sixty four hundred dollars. Yeah, but they're not six four hundred bucks anymore. No, I, well, for for a really really mint one, I I I I I don't really get paying insane money for a, unless it's like a rare saline or something something that's like this one just seemed like a nice clean low mile car. Like it wasn't some. I don't know. It just seemed it seemed high. It seemed really high. Yeah, it wasn't that insane. But that's kind of going on. This is the market. Uh, There's insane stuff is happening. Yeah. Insane stuff is happening. Yeah, I've, like nine six fours are like one hundred twenty five grand. Which that car. We, I was just texting my friends on the way up here about uh, the two hundred thousand dollar car driving experience. The hundred thousand dollar car driving experience. And I was telling them like mentally, you need to start adjusting your mind because a car that you you know nine nine three turbos are selling for two hundred yeah. pretty commonly. And one of my friends was like, oh, it's not a two hundred thousand dollar driving experience. Well. Get it, get with it. M- E30 M3s are 90, 100 now. Like 80 series Land Cruisers are 50. Yeah. Like this is the world we're in now. The, uh, this everything has changed. My four GTs were 350 thousand dollars. Like we yeah. need to, we need to add inflation to our brains. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's already happened in the market, but it hasn't happened yet. I think to people mentally. I think that's fair. And I guess that that's sort of the reality. And maybe the O2 WRX is a... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, look, I, you know, people were paying fucking huge money for, like, shitbox muscle cars, too, yep. you know, t- 15 years ago. So I do get it. But that one was, like, because... I believe it when it's an experience you can't buy anymore. Yeah. But with Subaru <laughs> specifically, especially Subaru, yeah. because they sold the same powertrain for yeah. so long. But those early cars are rare. They're rare, not modified. That car was a stick and blue. Yeah. And the first two years, they only made that the body stuff for two model years, yeah. you know, I guess it was two or three, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just, that's kind of a special thing, don't you think? Uh, there's I, something to it. Someday that car is going to be really desirable. Like Evos. Like Evo 8s. Mm-hmm. Those are going to be way more And they're more still they cheap, surprisingly. They're still cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Even for now, they're still affordable, which yeah. is weird. I don't get it. Because yeah. that's a cool car. Is that a crank walk problem? Or is that just like they've all been beat to hell problem? I, I have to assume. You know, it's interesting. All those reliability issues that some of these cars have, they kind of go away once the car becomes really valuable. Oh, like, yeah, we all sure. know that 355s are a disaster. Yep. But the kind of guy who's paying 150 for them now, they doesn't really care. Well, the, if the car's valuable enough, yeah. it, the maintenance it becomes worthwhile. The first time I saw it was with Testarossa's. Yeah. Test, when Testarossa's got down to 50 grand, but the the major right. service was fifteen. You went well. This is dumb. Right. But if you know, but if a test rose is a hundred and fifty or two hundred grand, yeah, fifteen for a major seems yeah. more palatable. Speaking of, how's that Countach doing? So what happened with the Countach? Yeah, I had a minor electrical issue like at the beginning of October. Yeah. Uh, I had I had three flawless years with it. Yeah. I I mean it was I I put a bunch of kilometers on it. I had a great time with it. Yeah. I had a little electrical issue. I sent it up to Donnie, who diagnosed the issue, and said, "Here's the thing. I know how to fix your car. There's one part. Oh God. That to get in America, is like three grand. But I'm going to Italy. He he has a, Donnie has a patron. Did I tell you about the patron? Huh. Donnie spends 50% of his time here in California and 50% of his time in Belgium working for a prince of some kind. Okay. Okay, and this guy has bought half of Donnie's time. Oh. So every six weeks to eight weeks, he goes back and forth. Okay. And he only has like three or four clients here in America, and I'm yeah. one of them, and he's got one client in Belgium. So <laughs> my car broke like two weeks before he yeah. left. Yeah. So he figured out what was wrong with it, and he goes, okay, I'm going to Belgium. I can't fix your car before I leave, even if you spend all this money on this part. But when I go to Belgium, there's this Italian car swap meet every year in Padua that I always go to, (laughs) and this part that's insanely expensive in America, I can get for like 100 euro (laughs) at this thing. So he goes, if you don't care, hold off until I get back, and I'll fix the car. Which is what, pretty soon? 
He got back three days ago. Oh, and did he get the part? He has the part. Awesome. Uh, Where oh, did he wow. get the part? From Valentino Balboni. No way. Who is in the business of recycling vintage Lamborghini parts now. That's his gig. You're kidding. Yes. Balboni is in the in the parts Well, recycling. the parts as well as he will do pre-purchase inspections for Countach's and Mura's because mm. he's seen every car. So, we know, you know. So, Donnie said he got this part, but also, you know, because it's Donnie, there was a while we're in there. And the while we're in there was... At some point in the 90s or early 2000s, there's some non-OEM engineering right. in my electrical system, which happened as those cars got cheap, cheap. Yep. people kind of Mickey Mouse shit. He wants it to take apart the electrical system and put it completely back to stock, which, given the car is worth twice what I paid for it, given the fact that I don't want to end up stranded on the road, to your point, you know, from five minutes ago, right. is worth doing now. Right. So that's what we were doing. When so you bought that car, mm -hmm. same time I bought my Ford GT. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. And we were texting about it, and you were like, you think this is a good idea? It's a pretty expensive car. Yeah. And then we both bought our cars at the same time. And we both agreed that they were good ideas. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> and then you told me, let's have, a, let's have a contest to see which car is more reliable. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Ford GT has been more reliable. However, yeah, of course. Yeah. it has not doubled in value. <laughs> it has not. The Countach has been, the market on those cars has been... Insane. It's on fire. Yeah. It's on fire. Anniversaries are 550 grand. And I, nobody wants those. And nobody wants those. I always assumed that those cars, at the very least, nobody if I ever came up like Tyler Hoover. Tyler right. Hoover oh came God. up like. That's the craziest thing. So, my friends, everybody I know makes fun of Hoovy for spending all, all his money on cars, which he no, does. I mean, that he one routinely has no out. money. Yeah. And, and then I'm watching one of his videos where he tried to sell his cars. And he's like, well, I sold this for 20 grand more than I paid for it. Sold that for 10% more. And the Countach and the Mercy, you know, he's got these cars that are now, or the Diablo. The Diablo is a good, now, a good Diablo, I think, too. Yeah, well, you rough, got a Roadster. Still. I think it's still rough. I think all Diablos are kind of rough. <laughs> <laughs> so I've driven a couple that are very nice. but, but I but, think they drive okay. But I think, talk about cars with deferred maintenance. Like, Countach oh, is always yeah. an icon. Yeah. There was a long time where the Diablo wasn't. Yeah. Even maybe still. I love yeah, them. You'll find some Mickey Mouse shit in early Diablos yeah. for sure. Yeah. But he came up on that Countach like for crazy. sure. Like crazy. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm sitting here, I'm making, I've been making fun of him for two years for putting all his money in cars, and he's probably he's probably done better than I've done in the market. Yeah. <laughs> with buying That's amazing. Yeah. And all these other dumb cars. Yeah. The, no, the, uh, the Countach was a, was a smart buy. Yeah. Even, I mean, and I got three years of really, really regular use didn't without you, having to do anything. Didn't you break down at the uh, exit of some car event and have to talk yeah, to everybody? Yeah, in front everybody? of Bills. Oh, my God, it was the worst. <laughs> Everybody, I just sit there for four, and it was like the busiest Sunday of the year, yeah. and it took five hours to get a flatbed, <laughs> yeah. and I was sitting in a place that was safe but not legal, Right. and so people either wanted to take the picture right. of the car, talk to me, or just yell at me for right. being there. It was right. like the worst of all worlds. Yeah, there's nothing worse than, you know, the thing I hate the most in life is when someone says the cliche, whatever the cliche phrase you happens trade? to be, you want to trade. trade? And boy, I can only imagine what you were <laughs> that But I have an amazing photo. The first guy who rolled up to try to help was driving a red Countach with gold wheels. You're kidding. It was the mirror image of my car, but without a wing. So I do have a picture oh. of two identical Countaches next to each other, huh. which was pretty cool. But he wasn't able to help. Not really. There was a limited amount to what he could do on the side of the road. What did the car need? Was this one that had this problem? This, is, this oh, was this problem. Yeah, yeah. It could not have been fixed on the couldn't side Couldn't have the taken road. his $3,000 part. <laughs> right. Yeah. <I> didn't know. <laughs> Just swap it right Let there. Let me see under your hood for a second. No, right, right. right. But this guy apparently was some kind of like Countach celebrity because he's had this one for like 30 years and he kind of like hot rodded it. It, sa it sounded completely different from mine. It had cams in it and like no, really like, hot rod carbs. It sounded like a fucking race car. It was cool. That's crazy. It's crazy to imagine now that people did that then. Yeah, there's a lot of cars that that's true for. We we're just talking about E3 M3, but um, Donnie's got stories about some of his customers that were able to get like race parts from the Ferrari factory or through like Luigi Chinetti or shit like that. He's got a 512 boxer in his shop that has like the LM engine in it that some guy was able to just buy from the factory and like put in his street car. Oh, no way. Not, yeah, it's not. How cool is that? that when the cars were cheap, no, it doesn't happen anymore because the cars are too valuable, but they're. And obviously those cars are either worth less or not worth so much more. But like, it's, it was a cool era. Yeah. Like the cocaine era. Yeah. Like, man, cool, like Cool stuff is going down. What's crazy is like, 
like like Koenig stuff is awesome now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do like, you remember for years, ever, nobody wanted anything to do with that stuff? But mm-hmm. it's so period now. Mm-hmm. It just look it kind of cool. Do you think Mansory is going to have that? Do <laughs> <laughs> you think there's going to be like, oh, Mansory? If you want to look at some of the cars that have done the best in the last 20 years, it's cars that people didn't love mm-hmm. at the time. There's been a lot of that. I, yeah. I think often about M4 GTS, actually. If that car, which has been unloved since the day it came out, if one day maybe that becomes something. But may, I mean, maybe Mansory, it, it's a time and place thing, right? It might right? be, yeah. It might be. I, I remember people talking shit about like those like Gimbala stuff yeah. and Koenig stuff, and now that's that's real money for yeah. that kind of stuff. Way more. People yeah. way overpay for those heinous things. Yeah. But I would too. Like if I was in that world and wanted that, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's a weird thing. It is, and I think there's a lot of like new money. Yeah, you know that that is looking for things to to spend it on. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't I don't understand NFTs, but obviously right. people are fucking <laughs> right. actually worse. I do understand <laughs> NFTs. Right, <laughs> makes it even less desirable. It makes it even less desirable. It seems right. like the dumbest thing in the world. I agree. But, yeah. People have made real money. Yeah. But I think uh, I you you've beaten me in the four GT maintenance uh, department. Yeah, you know actually my but car, your car was very well cared for by yeah. Carl. Carl kept, Carl owned it. He bought it new. Yeah. Had it the whole time. Southern California. He did everything to it. He was cra- You know he was very careful, and it's great. And I drive also, it all the time. Different eras of manufacturing, like you know, which is why I was surprised when like, he made that that's offer. A, that's the, a bold that, bet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the time, it was a premium price. For that car. Oh, offer to have a like reliability to, to contest. decide, right. Yeah. Which yeah. one would be more reliable? It was pretty yeah. clear to me what was going to happen. But by Countach standards, my car was really good. It yeah. was really, really good. And it was. It gave you, like you said, how many miles have you driven that car? Kilometers? Uh, I put 8,000 kilometers on it in three years, which is not... A ton, that's, but for Countach, that's a lot. I'm trying to think what I've done. I think I've done 7,000 in three years of 4GT. Yeah. It's about I, to hit eight. I would have... I should have bought a Ford GT. I love them. I love driving them. I love when I see them. Yeah. I mean, They're you know, so cool. even if I had had emptied all the reserves and paid a premium at the time, I think it still would have been smart. I mean, if, you know, that's they're they're the car, a car like that ticks all the boxes of end of an era, timeless styling, manual right. transmission, Rules that don't exist for car building anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's got every box ticked. And it's usable, which it I is. think is the coolest part of it, because I love the Countach and wish to an extent that I had bought one. But, like, I will take the 4GT to go drop off the dog at yeah. the daycare and to go to the grocery store. The Countach, not only does it terrify me for a liability pr- perspective for that, but I just don't want to have that conversation all the time. I can only imagine the attention that car gets. A lot. The GT gets, gets a, a lot, lot, but the Countach... It gets be. a lot. It's not as, at least, the conversations aren't as annoying as when I had a DeLorean. Right. The DeLorean is like, oh. if you want to talk about conversations you don't want to have, right. drive a DeLorean oh, for I, like a I week. I can only, I think about Ugh. that every time I see one. How many people come up to this dude and are like, flux capacitors? The worst. Well, it's because everyone the has the same story for the DeLorean. Everyone saw the same movie. Yeah. That's it. But like, Countach or 4 GT, they go, oh, I saw one of these race, or I remember that. There's That's more true. variety to the conversation. And I will say, since the movie came out, the Ford versus Ferrari, mm-hmm. I get a lot more people now, and they the, a lot they more recognition it. of yeah. the car now. My favorite thing about having the like, I think the con the conversations with the Countach are are in they're all they're positive. My favorite yeah. thing about those conversations is when someone says, "I've never seen one in person." Yeah. So the fact that I have brought it out into the world and you now get to see it in person yeah. and are happy about it like that's great that's super cool yeah. yeah and it's much nicer to drive than people once I got over being scared of it yeah because the first couple of months I was terrified yeah. I was terrified right and once I got over that and I was like actually this thing steers and rides and shifts and bra- like it's actually quite lovely yeah and it's comfortable yeah and then I was like, oh, this is actually fucking great. Yeah, like, plus it's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. It is cool to have those conversations. And one interesting thing about both the 4GT and the Countach is every reaction is positive. That's mm-hmm. not true for some, for a lot of supercars. A lot of supercars, some people have some of, uh, you know, people who really know that one was crappy, whatever. But I've never, everybody, when I bought my 4GT, everybody in all parts of the world, whatever, were like, that's so cool. That's a great choice. You know, yeah. whatever. everybody kind of. Those cars have this sort of mystique around them. That's yeah. like this thing is just they're awesome. so good to drive, though. They're so the yeah. Ford. The Fords are yeah. fucking great. I wish servicing it was a little easier, but um, and there are a couple of like little things with those cars, like gauges can get fucked up. Yeah, and, and fortunately, re- mine's had all that addressed. So I haven't really yeah. had any problems, and I have a good shop that's like a performance shop that does like GT cars and um, GTRs and things mm-hmm. like that that they work on it. But if I ever really needed something, I don't know. 
I, ter- I don't know. There's a few folks. I think there's like a group of like traveling there techs, are. right? But the like, tra- think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know the car. In your yard. <laughs> like a right. circus. <laughs> the car that I really would be worried about that for is the new Ford GT. Oh, yeah. Um, Ford dealers are, the stories I'm hearing, Ford dealers already don't want to be a part of it. Really? They don't want to touch oh them. They don't God. know how to work on it. They don't have the insurance. They don't, it's too, every, the tolerances are too difficult. It's all made by uh, Multimatic. Multimatic in Canada, Multimatic. yeah. Multimatic, yeah, yeah. And... Yeah, uh, ten years. From, five, it's already a tough thing. Ten years mm. from now, I don't want to be a part of that car. Yeah, that and the other one to have bought ten years ago or five years ago would have been a Carrera GT. Yeah, um, I mean they're gone forever. Unfortunately. When I was coming out of college, those cars were two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and I was like someday. So weird that they couldn't sell those. They couldn't they? sell them. And then when I got two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> They were half a million. And I was like, someday. <laughs> and now I could buy that if I wanted to, a half million dollar car. Right. But they cost a million yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I'm, and I'm not spending that. People are like, oh, when are you getting your car? I'm not. I'm not having any plans for it. I don't need it. Because I've always made a big thing about how that's my favorite car. I have never, it's never going to happen. They're never gone. had a million dollars. They're, they're gone. I mean, they're also. They're gone. I think it's less appealing at a million dollars. There was something cool about that car when it was a half million. It felt attainable. And it was like this, but a million two, a million three. I don't know. It just starts to become less desirable to me for if some I, reason. If I, I don't have that much to spend on a car. But if I did, I would probably start to be nervous. The, yeah, I there's think the I'd nervousness. Be too nervous. There's also you're, you're in the group with the people who are spending that on a car are not the people I want to be around. <laughs> I hate to say that. Did you watch that. the Lou LaRoe documentary? Yeah. The Koenigsegg dude. The Koenigsegg guy. <laughs> totally. The Ko- I was like, oh my God. I'm like, of I course l- this is the Koenigsegg guy. I love Koenigseggs. And as soon as I saw it, as soon as they go, he's in this group called Ghost Squadron. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Christian von Koenigsegg probably wants to blow his, head, his brains out right now. But th- that's the kind of people who buy those cars. It's actually kind of a sad thing because some of these cars are the most amazing marvels of technology. Yeah. Well, you know, it was interesting. I don't know if I should tell the story, but I when I was with Jay Leno and I reviewed, you should. <laughs> I reviewed his uh, McLaren F1. Uh-huh. One of the things I asked him when we were driving was, "What do you think about other McLaren F1 owners?" And Jay Leno, he's been asked everything and he, he knows the answer to everything, and he's he's pretty quick with a lot of stuff. And he thought for a long time, <laughs> and he gave a very diplomatic answer. Yeah. But what you could tell he was thinking was, "They're all just a bunch of jerks with money." And they don't really care about cars, but they wanted the ultimate car. And so they bought one, and none of them use it, and none of them know anything about it, and none of them know how to fix it. Like, he, you know, he's into the- Yeah, he, t- t- he did a major service on it yeah. himself, right. which is pretty Whoa. G. Yeah. <laughs> And he, so, so you know he's sitting there, and I kind of feel like that when the F40s are now two million. It's you're just in a group of people who aren't. It's not really my world anymore. I don't want to. I think that kind of saying goodbye to those cars, sadly. I mean, I, I think I Jay always has sort of an interesting perspective on that kind of stuff because he usually, you know, there's the engineering angle and the performance angle, and he obviously knows so much about cars. Yeah. But he also there's certain cars that he either definitively likes or doesn't like. Because of either the type of person who drives them, or more more often the 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 individual who made them. Yeah. yeah. When he saw my DeLorean, he was like, "Fucking John DeLorean, yeah. fucking crook." When I you showed know? up there that day to film with him, that was one of the first things he said. I don't even remember why DeLorean came up, but he brought up how he hates John DeLorean. He hated Enzo Ferrari. Yeah. Hates John DeLorean, and it's yeah. just a very interesting. Like he's the grudge. Yeah. You know. It, and you know, it, it, it's a, it seems to be a long lasting grudge because I asked him. I said. You know, I've always heard that Jay has no Ferraris, and so I, I, I've i heard the reason. I Secondhand, I've heard why that is. But I was curious to know for myself, and I was with him. I was like, oh, I'll just ask him. And he said, you know, the thing about Ferrari is they make you buy another car first. He said, like, you go into the dealer, and they make you buy, like, a Mondiala 348 before you can get what you really want. And I'm sitting there thinking, Mondiala 348, this guy's been holding this grudge for He's, 35 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I bet now His they would experience. get Jay Leno what he wants. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Jay could probably order something. He right. could probably get an 812 It would be okay, but he went into the dealer in 88. You have to be that famous, because he went in with the money, right. and they wouldn't let him do it. And right. uh, uh, what's the pitcher's name, the guy that um, owns all the McLaren? CJ. 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 He, when he he told the story, he started making money, playing baseball, walked in with money, and was like, I'd like to buy a Ferrari. And they're like, mm, you have to get a used one. He's like, I'm going to go get a McLaren. And yeah. now he has three McLarens. And now he has yeah. a McLaren dealer. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's, I, I kind of get it. It's like... Yeah, I get it, too. Yeah. I understand why that would be frustrating for people, especially people who are, in that point in their life, used to being told yes to everything. Yeah. Um, or have worked really yeah. really hard up to that point where like my dream is a Ferrari yeah. I finally got through the minor leagues or grounded right. out in stand up <laughs> right. and they're like no they're like, but that's I have that's happening the money. with watches right. now yeah too. but even so 
watches I same shit yeah i was we were just listening and tom segura had told me this story but we just zach and i were driving back uh, from a shoot and listening to the podcast of tom segura interviewing kevin o'leary from shark tank who's yeah. an enormous watch collector and he asked tom like what what watch he would like and tom was like oh i really like this patek uh the nautilus whatever and kevin o'leary straight up he goes you will never get one of those <laughs> <laughs> it's that very frank Kevin O'Leary. Voice. That's the truth, though. It's it's it's, and you know it's funny because when when we were younger, it was started to be truth Ferrari. Like the 360 was the first car I remember that being. A yeah, thing where for the us. flipper thing being. Where yeah, you and you buy had to the be, used right. one and then sell it back to right. them, and or, or whole, get on the list and just wait. You know, forever. Do you think and ever they and ever. changed the rules when when the f- stores became went from gray market dealers to official Ferrari stores, and they said you cannot sell these used cars for whatever you want anymore. Yeah. Well, I th- there are a lot of things became a problem. P- customers were getting upset. You know another interesting thing that happened that I didn't realize and I found out recently? When F40s, F40s were being sold new by dealerships for 3X, their yeah. sticker. And when P- when that market kind of tailed off quickly um, and the cars had problems, Ferrari had to buy it back at the uh, yeah, the Lemon Law buyback at the they- price that it was sold for, <laughs> even though Ferrari only sold it to the dealer for the sticker oh, price. Oh, that's and so int- that maybe was one that's of the why they made that rule. That I've Ferrari heard that that was one of the reasons why Ferrari no. started to say no more markups. Now, How interesting. we all know that the other stuff goes on and whatever, but it's not just it's interesting though because it started with those Ferraris and it's now everything. Porsches, nobody can get Porsches anymore. Yeah. You got to be a seven-time customer. But a local dealer if in San Diego, a, if you want a desirable Rolex, yeah. like. Yeah. A steel Rolex, you have to buy the ugliest yeah. gold and yeah. diamonds. Is that and, really? So yeah. it's the same sort of situation. 100%. You literally have to go in and buy the 612 of the exactly in the order same. to get a. You got to buy the shit nobody wants. You got to get two Maseratis for you can qualify yes. for a. Yes. Interesting. But it's even, <laughs> it's even worse. It's like you have to buy, if the watch you really want retails for like 15000 which is a lot of money for a watch. They make you buy, and it's steel, right? It's like a steel Rolex Submariner standard. They'll make you buy two gold presidents for forty or fifty thousand each in order to get on the list for this. What? Fi- yeah, wow. God. yeah. So it's a bribe. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Do you wonder if we're in a situation where too many people have too much money? <laughs> Is I'm, worried the I'm worried we're in a situation where too few people have an well, astronomically that too. But there's a, a lot of people of with a lot of money who are able to go and buy a lot of things right now. There and are. And boy, are they. Yes. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Which is going back to the five over for Rev4 Primes or 10 over or whatever. <laughs> for Rev4 Primes. <laughs> the um, High quality, rare automobile. The Ford dealer up the road has a crazy amount of ADM on Broncos, yeah. Raptors. Shelby's. We're seeing I mean, it on cars and bids. We're selling cars. We're taking new cars. Yeah. And How's that business right now? Good. Is it? Yeah. You're taking new cars, <laughs> did you say? Not brand new, but cars that guys have bought and have 11 miles. Broncos, C8s, uh-huh. M3s, and they sell. Yeah. For over, you know. How much of your time is that business taken up? It's a lot. Yeah. But it's great. It's so is it? Fun. Is it? Do you spend on an average week more time dealing with that than making Depends videos? Depends on the week, but some weeks, yeah, and some weeks now. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, it's. Is it a rewarding business? Yeah. You it's enjoying great. it? Yeah, it's so much fun. What's the what's the uh, percentage transaction increase for a car you feature in your one of your videos? It depends on the car, um, but it's pretty strong. We've sold we had we set a record for an AutoZam, uh, by far a record for what an AutoZam. What, what, what was the thirty five? That's a lot for an AutoZam. <laughs> yeah, I think for trailer the highest one was like twenty twenty one. Yeah. That's a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's a ton. I mean, imagine paying that for, for <laughs> just a lot of money. It was a really nice one. If you were going to spend it, this was the one. My friend tried to sell me. I reviewed one, and what's a yellow one? 2014, maybe? It was like a full four years before they were legal in the U.S. <laughs> okay. And the homie tried to I was like, this thing is great. And he's like, I'll sell it to you for 27 And I was like, no, this seems very shady. Like, yeah. No, it seems yeah, like, right. and, yeah. but but and it was like you know when they were first legal, they were like twelve, right? You know, yeah. and, and that's kind of what they should be. Well, that is probably what they should. Although that car drives a lot better than I expected it to. Um, I was impressed by that. It was. It was pretty fun to drive. Actually. It's fun to drive. Yeah, it's, it at is. the end of the day, it's a, Mi- a Mazda from that era. Like yeah. they made good sports cars. They know yeah. how to do that. It has a great shift action, really good pedals. If it only had some more power, it would have yeah. been a fun it's car. A, it would be a good bo- Hayabusa swap. People tell me. Someone told me that people have done that and a couple other things. Yeah. And, 
Pe- the rear suspension was a little, <laughs> but it could be yeah. improved. Yeah. It's aftermarket. I love that thing. I thought it was cool. I thought they were really neat. I had yeah. a great time driving it for a day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I would want to drive it for a whole day. You know, it's a little tight in there, but uh, well, the <laughs> a great one time I, driving the for The one video. I drove was uh, the seats were modified. Yeah. If you take the seats out, you yeah. can put in the seats from a Lotus Elise, oh. which actually uh, give you a lot more room. Really? Yeah, you know it worked. It, huh. it, it was actually okay. Yeah, the owner of the one I did told me that pe- there's a mods and stuff. You drop them and lower them, get them further back yeah. and all that stuff. You can do that shit. Yeah, yeah. But it's Of those little sports cars, I think that one's the coolest. Well, yeah, it's definitely the coolest. It got going yeah. doors. Yeah. You know, shit. Honda beat enough going doors, you know. Uh, the Sarah, I like. I the think Sarah's the Sarah's cool. kind of That was cool. not a K car, but the Sarah's cool. Uh, yeah, but it's. I don't know if they were stick Sarahs. The only ones I've ever seen were autos, and if that's true, that's kind of disappointing. I think there's. I think they must there be. Are, there I must think be. There's manual Sarahs, but still, yeah, yeah. it didn't have much power, and you know. Doesn't uh, doesn't uh, Mr. Regular have a Sarah? From regular car pow. reviews, no, no. I think he has a Sarah. Yeah, he may. I don't oh. know. Um, it's hard to keep up with what all the cars people have on YouTube. You, have know. you paid attention to this? <laughs> it's really hard. Stradman's got a Bugatti, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that dude. Stradman. You ever, oh, you ever wow. see him? He's building a house out I there. I hear he's a nice guy. I've never he's met really him. He's really nice. Yeah, but he's got a Bugatti. Yeah. And so there's all these people with all these cars. Why don't I have a Bugatti? Because you live in California. <laughs> he lives in fucking Salt Lake City, How come City, you don't dude? have a Bugatti? Because I live in Venice Beach. Yeah, but you can have a <laughs> How come we're not driving Bugattis? Dude's driving around a Bugatti. I th- I don't maybe because it doesn't interest me. Does All right, it interest fine. you? But no, not really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be good content. <laughs> but here's the thing. All these guys are getting cars like it's difficult to really follow along. Do you I, think there's yeah. a lot of financing happening cuz Don't you? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right? I mean, interest rates are zero, right? So I think people, a lot of people right. are doing that. Yeah. When I first started my YouTube career, I had a Ferrari 360. Do you remember this? Yes. And that at the time on YouTube was a big deal. Some yeah. dude mm-hmm. has a Ferrari. <laughs> Yeah. And now like 2011. Yeah, right. And now like you got to have a Bugatti to have anything. Yeah. Well, that's because a lot of channels and Shmi started this trend where like <laughs> I'm not trying to talk shit to Shmi. He did start a thing of like I have a new right. hyper exotic car. And so if you and don't everyone was like kind of like you, they were like, "Oh my god, a normal dude who makes content has a Ferrari." And then right. they were like, "Oh my god, this guy has a fucking Koenigsegg." And then it started that trend of each month I'm going to get a different car. Yeah, and it snowballed. Yep. And, and now you got to have a Bugatti. Who already super fucking yeah. rich realized how to get on this game. Right, right. That's so true. That's the I'm other al- thing. I'm already rich. All I need to do is make videos of my cars, and I could be famous too. Totally. Although some of those guys are starting to realize that it's, it takes more than that, especially because <laughs> yeah. people aren't that impressed anymore with like all those cars are around. They're yeah. all on Instagram. They're all on YouTube. It turns out you actually have to do stuff. True. Well, that's why I, I, I like have a personality. Uh, I like the B is for build guys. Yeah. They're building some silly shit. You know, yeah. I, I, I like I like some of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I do. And Hoovy. Hoovy, to his credit, he'll buy weird stuff. He'll buy old stuff. I mean, that sort of thing. And I'm into that. It's, Just having a 720S or even a P1 is not interesting. Not enough. No, it's not no, that no. interesting. Car yeah. Trek uh, came out today. Shout out to the, the oh, three did of those it? Guys. I haven't. I didn't. Their, their, their new Car Trek came ah. out today, and it features uh, the Million Mile Lexus. Oh, really? The Million Mile Lexus is a featured in. I gave it to Freddie Hernandez. Uh, is is featured and they they do the champagne glass thing with it. You know that car? Did it did it, did it do it? Uh, well, we don't well know, should we not reveal the? Yes, but with an asterisk. Oh. They glued the champagne glasses <laughs> down. <laughs> you know, it seems appropriate that that car ended up in Florida. Didn't you buy it from Florida? I bought it in yeah, Florida. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> we, our next series should be all cars go to and come from Florida. All the cheap, <laughs> old, crappy used cars eventually make their way to Florida. But it took me four and a half years to put 100,000 miles on that car to get it to a million. Yeah? You should have given it, it to me. I would have driven across the country with Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> Should have, if I know it at the time that that was right. what you wanted. No, to do. I, I, I wouldn't have done that. I, I, I fucking I I gave it to a whole. We have um over on the in the the library here at WCCS we have the Lexus logbook, which you should flip through before you leave. I remember you really were giving it to people and letting them drive it. Yeah. Did you ever worry about liability with that? I got the most commercial liability coverage I could get. Who who was writing that policy? Here's what um, I'm going to do. I'm going to I got a 30-year-old Lexus without any safety equipment. Yeah, I think it was progressive. And someone did it. Yeah, they did. They and really it was it. it was um so I bought the car for 1400 bucks. Right. The annual premium <laughs> Yeah, it was fifty four hundred dollars. Oh, <laughs> and that was why I gave it gave it to Freddie because as soon as as soon as I was done with it, I was like, "Take this fucking thing! I'm tired of these insurance bills." <laughs> and nothing happened. You know what do you I mean? think he's doing with it? Car Trek Six. Yeah, but whatever. you know, day to day. 
Nothing. He's driving that thing around. Nothing. He owns like 40 cars. It's just sitting there. <laughs> this is my point. Everybody's got too many cars. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I've, I'm, I'm coming up on this problem again myself. I'm I didn't buy to... a car this year. Good for you. First year in years. Really? Yeah. But you, uh, but you have some truly excellent vehicles. Yeah, I got two last year. You know? That G wagon. <laughs> yeah, you it. were really yeah, ahead the of worst the curve. Year to buy a car. <laughs> yeah. way, way to hold out, Doug. Way to have some control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank that, you. I thought I would make it through fire, uh, like I'm not 2020 without buying <laughs> right, a car. Right. Exactly. But, uh, you had that G wagon. You were ahead of the curve on that. Yeah. Greatest car I ever bought. You hate those cars. Well, yeah, but <laughs> but not like. I like uh, if I, I I like the convertibles much more than I like any Do you of the think, other okay, ones. Okay, I agree. Do you think you'd pay two hundred thousand dollars for one? No, certainly not. <laughs> yeah, and certainly not for a six cylinder. Like I know, like I remember that one. We now. thought about that before because I thought that was an okay number, in part because I own one of these vehicles and was happy to see the market moving forward. Uh, but. Mine is a V8, of course, the real motor, the yeah. M113. I love this thing. It's the greatest car I ever had. It it's does everything. very you. Oh, thank you. I mean, it is. It's a very Doug car. Occasionally, people come to me and they're like, how did you create this? <laughs> and I'm like, no, they sold these. This is, this is it. There's is a it, couple of them here in Venice that yeah. I see around. You know, there's, there's 120 of them in the United States that have ever had any Carfax hit in the United States, which means some of them came and left. Mm -hmm. So maybe 100 total. There's 12 that have been California legal and a few have left. And so I think mine is one of nine that's still legal in California. All of them are in Southern California. I'm the only one in San Diego. So the rest of them are all in L.A. Yeah. And I actually saw one the last time I was in L.A. The black, there's a black one that is in Venice by me that I, I see I saw a, a white one. But the, there's eight around, and yeah, they're all wow. probably in Venice and Malibu. You know, yeah, you got to yeah. figure. Um, but I, I told you, so. I think that this is the worst type of person in the world. I don't want to ever learn, like meet the other owners of this car because can you imagine the type of dude who buys a $200,000 G-Wagon convertible? Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> what do you no, want to be I happen of? to have had a conversation with the guy who owns the black one, and he's young, and he's a, a real enthusiast, and he's pretty mellow. Yeah. It was, not, it was not who you're describing. There are a few people who have them who are into them, and all, yeah. some of them had them a long time. There's a one-owner one in Lake Tahoe with 250,000 miles. Oh, uh, that rules. That yeah. should be up on. Do you have a standing offer to buy that one? I don't even know. that. I just have all the I have all the VINs, so I Carfaxed them all at one point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you do. But you were, you were ahead of the curve on that. Yeah, they gone up. They'd yeah. Gone up. I don't know that they deserve to have gone The up. wheelbase is so... How much shorter is the wheelbase than the four A lot. A lot. I mean, it's it really looks... It's really a stupid car. Behind it is pillar. truthfully the ugliest car I ever made. Now, last year I bought an Audi RS2. Did we, have we talked about this since I got that? Uh, not on the show, but but I, I knew about the car. Love that. It's car. a lovely little car. Yeah. Yeah, they're very cool. get one of those. They're not... You know, I don't have that old Audi... Um, yeah. Nobody. Nostalgia. Like, I wanted a B, I, I wanted a, there was a B5, like, RS4 Avant, like, conversion. Yeah. That if it was, like, because it wasn't real, if it went for, like, reasonable money, I was kind of interested. But then it was, like, yeah. it still sold for stupid money. We sold a the real. The B5 is lovely. I, it but, is. It's cool. Yeah. And it's better yeah. than my car. We sold a real B5 RS4 federalized one on the site. Yeah. I think it got 90-some oh, crazy so, money. I'm so, that seems low. Yeah, we, I, I, it, you'd think low. it would go a little stronger, but based on comps, it was a strong. It, the guy was really happy with it. It was Nagaro. It was really cool. Yeah, I mean that's cool. I really yours is it. like really cool. Like I get, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. I have never driven one though. Yeah, it's all right. It feels just like an old Audi, right? It's more than that because it's got more power. 315 uh -huh. horsepower at that time in a car that size, pretty strong number. Yeah. I mean, this thing is the size. It was much smaller than those Volvo 850Rs and things like that. Yeah. It's smaller than a 5 Series. It's like the size of a 3 Series from back then, and they didn't have 315 horsepower. Yeah, the E30 yeah. M3 had 240. Even for the us. E yeah, the E36 was oh, at, the E30. Was I like guess it was E36 or, era. Yeah. yeah. But those here they had 240. It wasn't that much. So this mm -hmm. thing was a real car. It's it was very fun. cool. Like if yeah. I see one on the street, I'm like, oh shit, that's that's that person knows knows right. something. Right. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's not too many. You don't encounter too many of these things. But Do I you drive really it much? Cool. Yeah, it's my normal daily. I take the kid in it all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's been super reliable too. That five-cylinder motor is actually like the only reliable. I have electrical problems here and there. Yeah. Did you have to have it uh, gone through? No, the guy before me kept it. I paid a premium to get a really nice one, but the uh -huh. guy before me kept it really nice. I recommend that. Yeah, same. Hey, like my experience. I just wrote uh, like fifteen hundred words for car bibles about the experience of buying my three twenty eight. Yeah. Did, did I tell you this? Yeah. That I bought my 328 and then found out the major service paperwork was completely fraudulent. You're kidding. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> what, I, what I thought you were going to say was because I remember you paid up to get a really nice one. I didn't. I paid, I paid okay money to get one that was, well, let me say this. How did you find out the paperwork was fraudulent? 
because it. So how do well, you fake? I mean, who would? Well, because it said it had a major service with a date. Yeah. On it and the previous owner's name on the yeah. paperwork. I bought the car in October. I'm scooping myself here, by the way, but you can read the <laughs> read about this on Car Bibles later. I bought the car in October. Uh. Came with service records, a lot of service records. Going back to the to the nineties, lots of service records, okay? Including one for a major service dated February of twenty twenty of an independent shop in, in Georgia, which is where I bought the car from. Now the good news is the car is triple black. It's never been in an accident. It's not original paint, but the paint is really nice. Yeah, and and in general, it's a strong, it's a strong, decent car. I paid a reasonable amount of money for it. I did not pay a premium to get a great car. I I, I could have and bought another car, but I didn't. I paid a, a, a middle middle of the road to get a car that was a driver, nice driver, but that wasn't red. Yeah. I it then when it arrived. It, it had a really rough cold start. When it was warm, it was fine, but the cold start was rough, and a couple other things were not great. So I sent it to Donnie, who started looking into it, and he said, he said to me, I thought you said this car just had a major service. Hmm. And I sent him the paperwork, and I, have, I said, I have a receipt that says it does. And he goes, he sent me a picture of the timing belts, and he said, these belts are at least eight years old. Oh. And then he sent me other pictures. He said, this fuel filter is from 1987. Oh. And then he sent me other shit that was like- So what, you contacted the guy who sold you the car? I left that person a voicemail. I did not hear back. <laughs> I then called the shop that supposedly did the major service twice. I did not hear back. At this point, I could have either sued Returned the car. Yeah, I mean, because this is beyond as is. They're actually there's actually as fraudulent. Is. I mean, ca used cars are generally sold as is, but if you represent that, yes, certain things. But at the same time, I already had the car. Yeah, I would already paid for the car. And a major three twenty eight isn't that much money, right? The engine doesn't have to come out, right? And so, which is one of the reasons why it's bizarre to fake a. Which is right, and so uh, how crazy! I just I just ate a dick. And you know Donnie, his 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 prices are reasonable because he's just a guy, not yeah. not some fancy schmancy shop. Yeah. And I just said, just just fucking fix it. And at the end of the day, the what I paid for the car and then what I paid for Donnie to make it right led to Dude, what you would have paid. What for I nice would have paid for a nice car, but what but I you could have used it. I could have been using it the yeah, whole time. Exactly, and that's why I think it is worth paying up if you can. Hence, um, EAG BMW M3. Right. <laughs> right. Why not <laughs> spend the money and then just turn the key and fucking drive the car, and you get exactly what you've. Paid I agree, for. Yeah. man. That is a crazy story. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of someone faking a record like that. Yeah. Um, wow. How insane. Mm -hmm. Terrifying. Sucks. Yeah. Super sucks. At least it wasn't a 355. Right. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, we're taking the engine out now. Right, right. It would have been real money. So let me ask you this. Do you think the guy you sold to, was it like a private seller? It was consigned to a dealer. Have you named this dealer and such? Or are you gonna... No, and I don't think it's important. I mean, you ever worry? I, don't, I don't think it'll, it would make a difference other than maybe someone suing me. Yeah. You know, instead right. of me suing them, right. they could they would sue me. And right. it's like, well, I, you know. You ever worry about that? I, I always, every time I take my car to a shop, I always think to myself, like, I feel bad for you because if something happens to the car, I got to talk about it. Right. And it's going to reflect poorly on you. Yeah. And it would be nice if none of that was the case, but you don't have a choice. Like if a shop destroyed my Ford GT, I couldn't be like, well guys, Ford GT has gone. <laughs> Can't tell you anything about why. <laughs> yeah. You kind of have to say yeah. what yeah. happened and why. Yeah. Well, fortunately working with Donnie, yeah. he sends me pictures every step of the way. Well, you're sh and But I mean insane. like when you buy a car, like yeah, yeah. like who we bought this, this Superbird on bring a trailer and there's some issues and then the, the the seller is called out because he's made a video, but you can't not make a video because this whole point of his channel, yeah. you got to figure when someone sells a car to us, they probably or or is doing work for us, they probably aren't thinking about the, the potential ramifications, but I always am and I'm always like I'm just always a little bit more nervous about what yeah. might come out of that. Yeah, well I I've intentionally I could say what the name of the I could say the name of the seller. I could say the name of the dealer. I could say the name of the shop, but it's just like I, it would start a shit storm that I don't yeah want responsibility right. <laughs> right. for. Right, and I'd rather just 
write this column for Car Bibles saying, I didn't listen to my own fucking advice. Right. And here's why you should. If you, if it was serious previous body damage that had been hidden if or- If the car a, was crashed- You would have. Yeah, I would have. And that's the thing. So there's a, there's a level where- you would, yeah, and it's. I think it, I still think it's just it's kind of dangerous sometimes for these, well, especially shops. With content creators. There's like two paths you can take. You can just ignore it and just find a different shop, or just move on. Or you can be the people that are like, they're gonna make eight videos of like, look what shop destroyed right. my blah blah blah, and right. then they find another thing right. in the next video and all that stuff. Right, which yeah. I hate, and I never I do have too. done that ever, and I n really never want to. But if you had some serious thing like the car yeah. had been hit, if the car had been hit, that's a di that would be really different. Like I. This it's very weird that an entire major service, but because the, the other question is, I it might not have been faked for me. Oh yeah, it might have been faked. You know what I mean? The guy who sold me the car, he might have no fucking I yeah. idea. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it might it, it might have been faked for that guy. Yeah. The Although the I shop suspect might have pocketed the money. Yeah. The yeah. Service, done nothing. Right? Yeah. That's true. Although I suspect he would have called you back if that had been the case. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> and so would the shop have. But. Yeah. That's the that's the thing about buying a used car. It's always kind of a terrifying thing. No yeah. matter what. When I buy a used car, I budget a. a I tell people 10 percent of the car's value to make it, to put it what I would consider to be my standard. Yeah. Some used car sellers sell a car, oh, it's nice, whatever. Well, when a car gets there, I invariably assume it, it, it might be nice to them. But unless you're buying from EAG, it's not on the level that I want it to be on. Yeah, yeah. The RS2 exactly. wasn't a big... There were a few things that I wanted to take care of that I think the, the seller maybe didn't or whatever, but it was pretty minor. Yeah. But some of these cars, I just am like, yeah, I'm going to have to just do a lot of stuff and you kind of go in with your eyes wide open. I kind of knew that was going to be the case anyway. I'd already planned... Right. That the car was going to have to go to Donnie for something. Right. You know, but it just ended up being a lot more than I thought. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, it. I got out of it for like 10 grand, which don't get me wrong, it's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of money that I didn't expect to have to spend. Yeah. But, you know, I, I might have had to spend it anyway. Even yeah. if I bought another car, like, you know what I mean? What, right. the, game out every other situation. Right. There, right. there isn't an EAG for Ferrari 328s. There right. just isn't. Wouldn't that be nice, though? <laughs> Fuck, it would be great. 355. Oh, my God. Imagine you could just guarantee you bought a perfect 355. The problem is there's no such oh. thing as a perfect 355. <laughs> <laughs> right? These are terrible I cars. <laughs> I know. I think they're the most beautiful Ferrari in my lifetime. And they sound they amazing. They sound amazing. They're terrible cars. Mechanically, and I, yes, they I are. have watched the values climb, and I've thought about it. Because but they pretty, are terrible cars. Pretty and sounds good. That's all it is. Outweighs yep. everything else. Yep. Do you know what you know what stick converted vanquishes are going for? No, right what now? are they going for? Dude, they bottomed out two years ago at like seventy K. Yeah. My homie in back east, uh, the cultivated collector, Matt yeah. Ivanhoe. Yeah, I met him the other day. He yeah. specializes in these in these cars. Yeah. He told I just saw him at the Audrain Concours in Newport, Rhode yeah. Island, which I can't recommend to you highly enough. Oh, it's really? fantastic. I assume so. Come They're, with me cool... next year. It's when is it? When do they do it? It's end of summer. It's like all, end of August, beginning of September. It's really, really yeah. fun. That'd be cool. You know what we'll do? We'll sideboard in and Nantucket it afterwards. I'll, we'll probably on the way home. Yeah, I'll, be, yeah. I'll have noodle. We'll take the boat. It'll be excellent. Yeah. But um, I see, he goes, I just sold two for 180 grand. Oh. I'm like, yeah, buddy. Wow. Because they look good, they sound good, and they're stick, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Wow. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful car, though. Saw so one of those on the street the other day. In Washington D.C., really being filled up in the city at a gas station. It was an automatic, I'm sure. But my God, that car still looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks great, and it's so small by yeah. modern yeah. Aston standards. It's a V12. Yeah. Also, they weren't that unreliable. Uh, you know, what are the interesting? No, mechanically, things? they're stout. They're pretty good. Yeah, they're very what are the stout. interesting things that I've recently realized? The V8 Vantage. I had a new six V8 Vantage, and those are appreciated. They were. They, I don't know if you checked prices lately, but they oh, have they gone the roof. way up because I think people are starting to realize. Everybody wa didn't want anything to do with those cars because everybody assumed that an old Aston Martin is going to be a problem. They're not actually really a problem. I drove mine. I had mine. I drove it 34 states. Yeah. Um, no, they're lovely. They're, Especially the, the the Gen 2 when they yeah. with the, with the 4.7. They're, yeah. they're great. They turned out to be pretty good. Can I yeah. get this? Yes. This is my usual and they're, thing. And they're like, you know, compared to what Aston's doing with their styling now, they're like tastefully restrained and, yeah. and classically proportioned. Although I still think Aston's look pretty good. But yes, I agree. They do it, look they good, but better they've then. gotten busier. Yeah, everything know. has. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I recently reviewed the Chris Bangle 7 Series. Remember that car? Yeah. 
I, I saw that it. video. Yeah, the O2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the one I did was a, a V12 uh-huh. because th- that's the only ones that are left. The V8s had a lot of problems. It turned out the turned V12 was the more reliable motor. Ironically, <laughs> but um, I did. Yeah, remember how controversial that car yes, was? It was. And I'm sitting there, and it's still ugly. Like that was still a terrible. The it's rear not end a great front design. Is, no, yeah, it's bad yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, it was never no no aspect of it was like, especially coming out of the E38. But like. Compared to modern cars and some of the weird, overstyled crap that's yeah. gone on, it, it, look at this and it's E38s like, oh. E38s are spectacular looking. That's the thing. They're it really was, You were never going to be able to realistically follow up the E38 well. Yeah. Those things are the shit. They're hot. Most beautiful thing I ever made. When you, but when you were, um, when you're looking, like, because I know that you, you won't just do, you look for a specific, you wait for the right one to come along. Mm-hmm. Is it just the most stock original Mintus condition one? Is that it? Or did you want it to be first year also? Did it matter? You needed it to be for that car. It had to be an 02 to 05 because in 06, they facelifted it yeah, they and took away some of the bit. ugly. Yeah. And I wanted all the ugly. Yeah. <laughs> and iDrive got better. And one of the other things about that car was it had that horrible original really iDrive bad, yeah. where you had to do, even to change like the climate control, you had to go, like, go in that menu after menu. You know? <laughs> and so I really wanted to do an early one. And it just so happened this one was selling on the site. And so the guy lived in Northern California. And I was like, listen, dude, if you bring this, I'll meet you in L.A. <laughs> if you bring th- I would give anything to review this car. And oh, my did. God. You must have made that fucking guy's day. You yeah, he did well. Life. He did well. Yeah. Ooh, the Typhoon, 20 hours left, 65,000 miles. Nice Typhoon, too. Yeah. yeah. They're tough to find in decent shape. They've had the shit kicked out just of them. Just like so many cars, they yeah. got cheap as hell for a while. And that Turbo V6, which yeah. no GM dealer had any clue what to do with, <laughs> yeah. well, that became a problem. And now they're getting expensive. Type like another car that's like not good, like it's objectively <laughs> yeah. bad. But the attitude, you know, Grand Nationals, like the the attitude is enough to keep it going. That's exactly right, and that's part of that whole thing. Like we need to reframe what we're thinking of as a two hundred thousand dollars driving experience. That car isn't a whatever it's going to sell for driving experience. Yeah, but it's cool as hell, and yeah. that's there's value in that. A two fifty GTO ain't a forty million dollar driving experience. No, like Bruce Meyer, you know, like legendary L.A. car collector Bruce Meyer, who's got cars in the eight figures. Yeah, Mo- cars uh, in the eight <laughs> figures. His son rolls around in a mint typhoon. Like, what does that tell you? You know what I mean? Like, someone with access to any and all funds to right. buy any car of any historical provenance you right. would think has of. Has chosen this special. Has chosen an aquamarine oh, typhoon. That was the worst to color. To fucking roll around in. You know, you Clint know? Eastwood dailyed one of those for years. And he, of course he did. Of course he was perfect. Of course he did. <laughs> Kill some fucking gooks with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course you know, he did. <laughs> I have become kind of into like what celebrities drive. Some of them have some weird stuff. Yeah, There's Lady Gaga now. has an amazing yeah. taste. Yeah, amazing taste. There's an Instagram now that shows even like '90s pictures of celebrities getting into stuff. You know, Robin Williams had a Europa G wagon, and he had NAS Defenders. Tons of couple of them. Robin Williams had excellent taste in all kinds of shit. Clearly, you know, he had when he died, his watch collection went up for uh, for auction, oh, really? and he had some really incredible, like like significant timepieces not like flashy shit like like complicated stuff that only like you know really really in tune collectors would have interesting. really interesting stuff yeah. and the Europa G wagon is like that too and NAS Defender I mean yeah you kind of got to know in period yeah. you had to know what you were doing right. to get one of those Isn't that yeah. Weird? yeah I'm into that I'm into that. I'm into that too yeah I've uh there there are a few uh we saw Ricky Springfield driving a split window vet in oh, Malibu yeah. recently huh? yeah which I think that works that lines up something. you're driving around L A right no, we don't have any celebrities in San Diego there's not a single famous person or, or anything like that <laughs> you know? nobody knows who San Diego is etc you drive around L A you see these people yes. you, you recognize them because yeah, I never recognize like I'll look in G wagons you know when I'm here yeah me too. But I don't know any. I, even if I saw somebody, I wouldn't know. Unless it's Tom Hanks. They I don't, don't know, usually look, look how you think they're going to look. That's part of the thing. Because there's the makeup. Right. There's the, the styling aspect. I've seen. I've I've had to do some triple takes. Yeah. You know, people get 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 old. You know, you've. you've right. You might have seen their movie recently. Right, right, right. But, was, but they're older I'll, than I'll, I'll, you, want, you want a name drop? Yeah. I'll name drop. But he, it has nothing to do with cars. But uh, this morning, I had coffee. Um, and had a really nice conversation with an actress named Lori Petty. Do you know who Lori Petty is? Oh. Uh, a League of Their Own. Mm-hmm. She played the kid sister Kit. Yeah. She was Tank Girl. She was in Biodome. So did you approach? If you saw this, her face, did you, you would approach this person? And say, this person. Do you know her? Yeah. 
Uh, she lives in Venice, and I I see her a lot. And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I and know she's in Point person. Break also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's sweet. She lives around the corner from me, and I see her at this spot a lot. And we chatted. She's got a new show out called, Sec- what's it called, Sec- Section 11? It's a new like sci-fi show on HBO. She was just talking about it. So you walk up um, to these people? Well, this one happened to be sitting at the table next to me. What do you say? How do you open that? I've her a couple that? times. I said, I said, oh, hey, Miss Laurie, because she's a little older than me now. <laughs> so I said, hey, Miss Laurie, and she, and she remembered me. She said, hey, Matt. Yeah. And uh, we were just talking about neighborhood stuff. Yeah. And Can't believe they're building the whatever over on 30th Yeah, Street. and then she, uh, she's like, oh, I got a new show out. And we were just talking about that for a minute. But. I met, the other day I met Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. You've met him I probably a bunch of times. Were you up here? Uh, this was in like, I don't know, two, three months ago. Oh, okay. He was he was in Santa Monica at the airport there. Oh, okay. And it was the most awkward encounter of my entire life. Not because of him. He was great. Of course. Because he's used to this. Yeah. But I was the most awkward person I've ever been, ever. It, it's, he's intimidating. <laughs> he's super intimidating. Yeah, he's super intimidating. Especially because I walk up to him, and I had heard that he was like in the next hangar over and wanted to chat. And I'm like, oh my God. You know? So I walk up to him, and he's like, oh, my God, it's Doug DiMiro. And watches, I'm like, oh. Yeah, he watches YouTube I'm videos. I'm like, terrified. I'm like, what do you mean it's Doug DiMiro? This is the scariest thing in my life. And then he goes, I watch all your videos. And I'm like, do you? Yeah. And no, he fact, does. I was shooting the GT4 RS today, and I kept making line mistakes because I was thinking, Seinfeld's going to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Seinfeld said, when he first said to me, I watch all your videos, I go, you're lying. You don't. <laughs> and then he started mentioning very specific things. He goes, I love that blue notebook you carry around. <laughs> And I go, oh, really? Like, you want one? He goes, no. <laughs> I just like that you use it. And I was like, oh. That's, that's okay. amazing. That's such a side yeah. I was the biggest no. fan of his TV show. And I loved comedians in cars getting coffee. Yeah. But I couldn't bring myself to mention any of that. I couldn't. It was just like, and it's funny because people. You know how surreal it is to sit it's down so and weird. have coffee I'm with sure, him? I'm sure. You feel like you're in the fucking show. Right. It bugs the shit out the of you. The craziest thing about it is people come up to me all the time, you know, and I'm sure to you, uh, all the time on the street and say, hey, you know, whatever. And so you'd think that I would have had some clue how to handle this interaction. <laughs> but I'm sitting there, no. like, sweating. The nervousness like, always flows upwards, guy? doesn't it? I guess. <laughs> Were you filming situation. something with one of his I was cars? filming a Bugatti EB110 oh. with a guy oh, who yeah. had in a hangar a couple hangers over. And that was a pretty cool thing. Yeah, but those Seinfeld are, those are really Seinfeld. Cool. And I just, I'm sure he thinks I'm insane now. Although he probably, this happens to him every time you meet somebody. It's probably hell to be him and meet new people because it's a disaster every time I bet. Leno, having been there, the way that Leno deals with people versus how Jerry deals with <laughs> yeah. people, it's very, very different. Why? What happened? Leno will give anybody five minutes. Yeah. Anybody. You can say the dumbest shit in the world to Jay <laughs> and he'll smile and give you five minutes. Huh. Jerry... He doesn't have a lot of patience. That was part of it, too, because when we saw him on his TV show, he seemed like a fun, happy, you know. Yeah. And then you watch him on um, Comedians in Cars, and yeah. he's got kind of, actually, he's got kind of a tough, kind of prickly, like, get away yeah. from me kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more Which real. I'm into. Like, I, yeah, I would be that way, too. I'm so jealous. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm so jealous of that. And so I kind of knew, in addition to having being really intimidated, I kind of knew that he feels this way about people. Yeah. And so I'm terrible. Does he think this way about me? I don't yeah. know what the hell to do. It was the worst interaction, and I'm just terrible at this, apparently. Uh, it's I don't want to meet. Fine. Well, probably, but it's you know. It's probably fine. <laughs> you're, but you're Doug. You're Doug. Even it's when okay. you walked up to me downstairs, I'm like, wow, that's Matt Fair in the. Because <laughs> you're always on the. You have screen. like seven times more yeah, but, followers but, than us. But, now. but nobody cares. I, you're like on this, you know. You're, <laughs> you're like, Guess you know. what? So are you. Yeah. <laughs> you're, I don't you're, know what it is. You're looking at now, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to people, like, you know, knowing people. I got my wife. You know, Hanging I know out with Jerry is, in, is incredibly intimidating. Yeah. Whenever I'm there, I just, in my own head, I just say, don't say anything that gets me kicked out of this table. Oh. <laughs> That's over and over. Just don't say anything that gets me kicked out of this table. I mean, I guess, I, you know, the thing is, he's it, to me, he was incredibly nice. As nice yeah, as yeah. could be, which is funny because I had this fear that, but, but probably, um, he it's probably a little bit of a lonely thing, kind of being those people. <coughs> And uh, so you feel bad for thinking that, and you probably they just want to try it about cars, because that's what they do. And that's how Jay was with me. He just kind of wanted to talk about cars. Um, but it's still intimidating, and that's terrifying. It's weird, man. When, you, when, when all that happened is that people pointed a camera at them. Right. You know what I mean? It's, right. not, like, it's not like you fucking 
jumped out of a fucking space balloon or did some incredible right. feat of superhuman. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's people true. Point why at is the camera. It, why am I so intimidated? It's just know. a guy. It's just it's so weird how our brain works, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And you think you wouldn't be, especially from years of people coming up to me on the street. And some people do it very well, and some people don't. And either way, I I try to make it as a nice of an experience as possible. But it didn't help at all. Yeah, no, there, none of that prepared. Just don't say anything stupid. Just don't say anything right. stupid. Just right. Don't say anything right. Stupid. And that's stupid. when you're sitting there thinking. And so as yeah. a result, you don't really say much of right. consequence at all. You're processing right. so much in yeah. the moment. Yeah. 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 Trying to analyze, like, what do I do? What do I say? What are they, what's their face doing? Is that, right. oh, does that face mean that they don't like me? Oh, no. And then. And, <laughs> right. And then it's it's literally like, that. Yeah. And you're also trying to carry on a conversation. Yeah. 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 Uh, and it doesn't, didn't, you know. Yeah. It's 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 watching the the two of those guys and how they deal with it a little differently is it's a very interesting sociological experiment. What do you do when people come to you? Hey, it's not fair. I try to ask them questions yeah. because I don't I'm so aware of how one-sided the conversation right. will be. Right. So I just try to, hey, what are you driving today? Uh, you know, whatever. And That's and my that, favorite too. And that's, sometimes they have interesting answers. Sometimes they do. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, and and I I just uh, try to keep it moving. Yeah. You know, try to try right. to always keep it moving. People tend to be really respectful of my time. They come up to me. If I'm willing to give them a minute, they're thrilled. If I'm willing to give them three, they're thrilled. Yeah. If I just have to go, they get it. It's I, weird I like that, that you have to be responsible for ending all interactions. Yeah. That's that's weird, that that kind of pressure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, they'll take as much time as you'll give, but you're responsible for saying when that time is over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's exactly the, right. The benefit, though, of social media and YouTube is that they see the volume of content we make. Yeah. And they always – people say all the time, like, oh, you must be so busy. You guys are doing yeah. a lot of stuff. So that helps you – Yeah. Get out of the conversation. That's even right. Even if it's uh, even if you're not busy that moment, but you just want to leave. Yeah, people do get that it's a lot, and that you're probably doing a lot. And and there's some people that get the impression that I really don't like talking to fans. <laughs> yeah. And and I and sometimes I like you know it. I think there's you know in, like in the rest of life, there's people that have good social mannerisms, and there's people that don't, and it goes beyond just being like nervous or whatever like there are people who genuinely have no idea how to talk to others right and like those interactions can be very unpleasant <laughs> like i'm sorry about that and there's people that are fucking cool and i like talking to people that are cool like wow. there's plenty of people that i hang out with on sundays at cars and coffee whether i know their name or not who i see them every week and we go on and on and have conversations and that started by them being fans and they're fucking cool they're just people yeah everyone you're just a guy with right. GoPro, a got camera i'm right. a guy i introduce myself all the time as i am a guy who owns gopros <laughs> that's literally how i introduce myself yeah i try i really do try to like be really nice to everybody yeah, yeah i do Sometimes it's just like fucking awkward. What do you what do you tell people when you're at like a thing, you know, like a social event, and no, and they don't know who you are, and they're like, oh, what That's do you what do? That's what I say, guy who owns GoPro. But then they're like, okay, what, what do you what do you mean? I say I'm an automotive journalist. Uh, usually, oh my god, I fucking <laughs> I got myself in trouble the other day. Yeah, Hannah, uh, my wife, uh, really likes selling shit on Nextdoor. <laughs> okay, she lo all anything old in our house, it's got to fucking go. Mm -hmm. So and we're moving soon. So we're now it's like lamps and end table and all kinds of shit. So we are we were selling yesterday uh, a puzzle, uh, a Lego set, Aston Martin DB5 James Bond Lego set. Yeah, we didn't really get to it, so we're, <laughs> it's got to go. So she sells it on next door, and she goes, Matt, can I gotta do something? Can you go down and meet this person? And I knew. I should have gone. The kind of guy buying a DB5 Lego set. I knew I should have gone out. First, I should have gone out the side door instead of going out the garage. Right. Second, I knew I should have worn a fucking mask, even though, I mean, we're outside. I wasn't worried about that. But, but, like, but still. Yep. And the, the guy was, I opened the garage door, and there is the Gunther Works Speedster. Right. And... In order to avoid, I, 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 I've learned from experience to not tell strangers what I do for a living because it just turns into a conversation yeah. that's like a fucking hour long that I don't want to have. Right. Okay. And so the guy sees the car and he loses his mind. Yeah. Okay. And, and he goes, oh my God. And it, is that yours? Yes. I didn't tell him the truth and right. say, I'm I agree borrowing with you. I get it. That. Here's why. I just said, Yes. Shorter conversation, I get that. I to get like. out of the to right. get out of that thirty seconds. 
Oh my God, I've had this Porsche. Can you tell me tell me about every Porsche you've had leading up to this moment? <laughs> oh my God, now I've got to, so I like make up a couple of Porsches. <laughs> But oh, I'm man. not specific. Tell the truth, and the list is short. The conversation's <laughs> over. Well, I tried to, but he didn't believe that it was just one. You should have been like, I had an 05 Cayenne Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> so then I make up, I make up a couple more Porsches that are from here. I'm just rat- thinking of customer cars, and then he sees this Gunther car is registered in Montana. Uh huh. For w- what reason I don't know, but it is okay. It's not mine. Oh, I was going to do this. Can you tell me everything about the pro? <laughs> but now I'm deep into the lie that it's my car. So no, I can't, I'm not going to be like, actually, it's not mine. <clears throat> so I go, oh, yeah, you know, it's this thing. And you do a corporation in Montana and whatever. And, and then I tried to, like, pivot away from that. You know, oh, if you, don't really, if you don't park your car on the street, just don't worry about it, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And it's on. And, and Hannah, thank God she is as, as, as observant as she is. She got she, you out of it. She calls. Right. She calls. Oh, I gotta I go. Need, I gotta go. What did this guy pay you for this DB5? Seventy-five dollars. Was it worth? Oh boy. Was it worth the seventy-five bucks to have to have this uh, conversation? No. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's what I get for not just saying whatever the truth was. You know. Uh, oh, I review cars. Here's my YouTube channel. Right. So, you know. That's it. Right. I right. should have just said that. If they ask the Montana question, you'd be like, oh, I don't know, my lawyer set it up, and then you send me the plates. And now if this guy finds the video I make with this car eventually, he's going to find out I'm full of shit anyway. He's so, not going to find the video. No, he didn't know not. who you are already. No. I can't believe he didn't know who you are. If you know that, if you're that into Porsches, right. and you Although, probably should. I found some of these Porsche people are into Porsches. What's you your, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what was really weird, like not, not that I'm that famous or think I'm that famous, but when I did the show for Haggerty, you know, on Haggerty's channel, some of the commenters was lit- this is like a year ago. Some of the commenters were like, "Who the fuck is this guy and who put him on camera? This guy sucks." Hmm. <laughs> like, I've been doing this for 15, 16 years, man. You know, like, we occasionally, you know, I write a little Doug's take in every car that goes on the site. Like, who the fuck is Doug? We've had people be like, "Who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he writing a his opinion about my car?" <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and I'm like, "How do you even find this better. thing?" You know what? That, that tells you that your that cars and biz is big enough. Yeah. It's beyond you. I had a guy come up to me and be sure. like, "Hey, I'm interested in this car on cars and biz. You ever heard of it?" That's amazing, but that's great. Yeah, I, I immediately was like, "Oh my god, this is this that's great news." Because it is great like, news. it needs to expand beyond my user base, and yeah. clearly it is. Yeah, no. If it's if cars and bids is dependent on you yeah, forever, it's a problem. That's not the right. point. It needs yeah. to spread its own wings. That's what and I fly. call the Larry Casilla problem. Uh, my friend Larry, yeah, ammo, ammo. It's, Love it's everything about designed it. to get him off his fucking hands and knees detailing, and yet all it does is make people want to pay more and more for him to personally come detail their cars. But he should name a price then, you know? He does. Oh, he does. He's doing fine. You see his <laughs> new uh, uh, Tycon Cross Turismo? No, I didn't know he got one of those. He's got an R8, right? He has a, he has a first-gen R8 that he loves. He has a 964 that's now worth $200,000. <laughs> And he's, uh, he, I think he might get out of that. He doesn't drive it very much anymore. And he yeah. just got a Cross Turismo, like yesterday. He ordered it forever ago. Neptune Blue. Cool color. Yeah. He I, was, love, uh, I love that channel. Mm-hmm. I think he's the great. The picture of the Neptune Blue. And that you and pic- him are buddies lo- going back. Yeah, we went to middle school together. And then high, and high school, we used to wash our Fox bodies in his driveway. <laughs> Washing yeah. the Fox bodies in the driveway in Westchester. Mm. Where were you? New Jersey? Yeah, Westchester. You were in Westchester? Yeah, yeah. You are in Rye? Yeah, they Rye were Country Day. The... <laughs> Rye Country Day <laughs> yeah. School. They were washing Quiet the fine people. Bodies. So you, let me ask you a question. You're at Rye Country Day. Yeah. Yeah, obviously you were the only guys with fox bodies, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but what was it like when you pulled in there and all the other kids had what did kids have at that time? You know E30s what was cool? maybe, I don't know. What did, no, this was so that we got our licenses in 96 and graduated in 2000. Okay, so, so they had E36s. So every so yeah, the 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 rich kids got brand new E36s, 328IS yeah. sedans. Were silver. there non-rich kids at Rye Country Day in the a 1990s? Few, okay. What were few. they driving? They so like Larry was one. Larry was the scholarship Aren't kid. Aren't you curious about this? The non-rich kids they drove. They sat on the bumper of the other kids that drove. <laughs> yeah. The, the yeah. non-rich kids drove like secondhand Corollas and Camrys. Larry himself, he had a Fox body, which was not an expensive car at the time. And it's still not an expensive car. But he also had a winter beater. He was the only person I knew that had a winter beater. And it was a true beater. It was yeah. a diesel rabbit. 
It was horrible. Oh, like a horrible, 50 horsepower crappy. Horrible. But, yeah. but, but I learned the virtue of the shit box. Right. It, we, had, we never laughed so hard in our lives besides right. driving that car. Right. There's no... Um, my friend Brandon had a horrible Mitsubishi Eclipse first gen, you know, automatic that vibrated <laughs> like like crazy. <laughs> this, this, I did production in 94. This was in 98. His was like, in, his was like a 91 or... Still, it was it's like a six-year-old car. Even at the time, it was fucked. It was not a good car at the time. Uh, uh, it's high quality DSM was they were making good cars. Good yeah. thing they're building Rivians now. And then the rich kids all drove Grand Cherokees. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, yeah, Grand Cherokees. Grand Cherokees, Tahoes, A4s, uh, 3 Series. Uh, yeah. You know, the occasional Lexus ES. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a, it was a, but, but what was cool was me and Larry and like two other kids had a little car club. Yeah. And they let, they gave us the first. The front four spots. Oh no! Way. So they let us every day like display the yeah. Like there was no, there weren't like signs or anything, but it was just kind of understood that though we we were the only people that gave a shit about cars, and we could have those spots. When that you, was cool. Let me ask you this: you know, you got the Fox body. Mine was a '95 actually. When that was okay, so it was it was a SN95. it was around. Yeah, my parents said I could get a Mustang, but it had to have airbags. Okay, so I got an SN '95. So yes. you, you got the Mustang there on days when that was not working. It always you, worked. Were you driving a Mercury Villager Nautica to school? That was before. Oh, it was before. My, that, before I bought a car, I drove my mom's Nautica Villager, <laughs> which, in hindsight, highly collectible. <laughs> <laughs> if someone submitted a really nice one of those to the site, I would take it. There was one on Craigslist recently. Really? And not only did, did I find it while I was in Seattle... It was in Seattle. It was in Seattle. And, and, and I was like, Hannah, should we just go buy this and drive it home? It was like $2,400. It was mint. Like a dozen people emailed me the listing, too. Oh. And it was on like Rad Report and all those like yeah. Instagrams and everything like You're that. You're kidding. Yeah. Interesting. I should have bought it. Those were cool. White wheels. All that Nautica crap <laughs> all inside. The Nautica all Nautica All those ridiculous night. That was one of the themes of the 90s was these fashion car collabs. company clothing. Yeah, fashion. The Orvis Grand Cherokee. Yeah. The original was the Cartier Lincoln. Yeah, that was that way was earlier. Yeah. Right, right, right. And then you had the uh, the Eddie Bauer, Eddie Bauer Explorers. Yeah. Which was huge. The L.L. Bean Outbacks were big. L.L. Bean Outbacks. Those were the really right. popular ones, but there were a bunch. Orvis Grand Cherokee. The Orvis and Grand Cherokee It even continued. Great. There was that uh, Chrysler 300, John... John Varvatos. That and the, the Gucci Fiat 500. <laughs> yes, but and there was also the... Um, the seven series BMW. Um, what's the guy who recently just died? The Karl Lagerfeld. Oh yeah, that's right. That's seven right. series. Yeah. yeah. This one was the 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 uh, <laughs> reverse panda. Yeah, it was like that. It was that one, the white one. Yeah. My yeah, mom's you, that's was the one. Uh, you gotta have the white wheels. My mom's was blue with white, not white with blue. Oh, but I, I that one there. Was, there were sailboats. Uh, sailboats yeah, on the seats. Into the seats. Right. Dude, Dude, there the was time. a sailing motif in this vehicle, <laughs> as if anybody who bought one of these had ever been sailing. It looked like a capsized <laughs> sailboat, didn't it? No, it's white on top. Blue on the bottom, so it's like a sailboat in the water. That's a sailboat, but we had the, the capsized you had the sailboat. One, the next oh, you one, no, we had the capsized oh, yeah, sailboat. Yeah, yeah. Like Did that. you have the white wheels? Yeah, definitely. This that a- that van. Let me tell you something. It was nice. Like oh. at the time, forget how corny it seems now. <laughs> at the time, it drove really nice. Yeah. I took out all the seats in the back. I put the mattress in the back. Yeah. And it had rear seat entertainment. Yeah. Oh, nice. And, VHS and dual zone climate. It had rear climate control. Uh-huh. And it, it was. It actually drove drove pretty good. Took yeah. my, I took my road test in it. You know, speaking of vans from this era. And by the way, one like of the captains chairs. One of the reasons that vans was good. You know, it was a Nissan at the end of the Nissan, day. Yes. Uh, and nineties Nissans were pretty good cars. Yeah. You know what I reviewed? I filmed. Has gone up yet? I did a Eurovan Westphalia. You remember okay. Those? Yeah. Quite interesting. They're, they're, I mean, they're not as cool as like a Vanagon was failure. No, but they're, but they're better. Better, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, a lot of interesting vans in that era. The silhouette, you know. Oh, my God. I wanted my mom. When my mom got the first, because she had two. She had two <laughs> oh, villagers. She Lord. had a 92 or whatever the first year was, 92 or 93. Yeah. There was uh, a regular uh, LS. Yeah. And then yeah. the second one, the 96, was the villager, was right. the Nautica. Uh-huh. Uh, but the, before she got her first one, I wanted her to get a, a dust buster so bud the Oldsmobile silhouette what what was the reason that she didn't was she, I, I t- did she I look at the mercury villager and say no no <laughs> i made this. her go test drive one and i just remember her going no <laughs> <laughs> but we also had a family friend 
who owned a dealer and and they had a Mercury franchise. Because uh, so, I was gonna say, why didn't you just get the Nissan? Why were you being, buying Mercury? Because that we yeah, I ended up buying a Mercury Mountaineer later because of V8. That. Yeah, the five O. It was. It was a V8. Oh, we'll yeah, drive. It those, was. Those were cool. Clients. Sweet truck. Yeah, it was a nice truck. Actually, it was good. <laughs> I have a buddy. Oh my god, look at the body kit on this Oldsmobile silhouette. Yeah, that's helps, a second though. gen silhouette. Because this is this is a pretty. That, attractive that's a vehicle. second gen silhouette though. Like, the, the, the Dustbuster ones. Have you done a video I mean, with one of those? Yeah, with a Dustbuster. There I am. He is. That car was junked the moment that video ended. I'm actually filming in a junkyard. You can see <laughs> that is an unfortunate looking car. The no, look in '92, that was the future. Yeah. Oh I, yeah. I can understand that, but looking at it now, yeah. I understand. I, That's I appreciate the with, what your mom with did. With anything that is the future in this era, it always becomes really, really, really stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but all, you know, all vans looked like that. The Aerostar, Ford yeah. had the Aerostar, and the Previa, of course, everybody knows. Previas really have aged nicely. Okay. That's Previas are good. <laughs> that's Previas of, are fucking that's a good. point of view. Speaking of the Previa, I recently shot a video at the Mercedes-Benz EQS, which when you think about it, have you seen this vehicle? Yeah. Once in person. It's kind of a compressed Previa. <laughs> kind of yeah, we saw one in white, and it that is not a, good, a helpful color for that shit. You know, I actually like the how that car The people who have looked. driven them, though, have told me they're lovely. I loved it. I would get it over an S-Class in two seconds. Yeah. Really? I wouldn't even- Yeah. Did you sit in the back, though? Yeah. Why is there a problem? Harris did it like a the review. Height? He's get, yeah, he said he's getting driven around in one, and he's like the back of the EQS does not have as much space as the S class. That could I could see that potentially being it. true. Yeah. Although oh. I'm surprised by that because oh, the wheelbase is longer. Because I want to get a, my phone because the we were talking about these EVs and the, the I had a little a slight correction on our Lucid facts from the other day oh, from boy. the Lucid folks. What happened? They heard a discussion. They um, we drove the Lucid Air. Mm-hmm. Did you drive the Lucid Air? Mm-hmm. Did you like it? I loved it. I thought it was fucking cool as hell. Yeah. Um, but we were talking about the the range efficiency in terms of uh, like battery pack size versus range, and they correct. They said the the most. Oh Jesus, uh, this is rude. But I'm gonna do it. It's more, <laughs> I want to have the facts right. Let Intermission. Go back to business. So Zach. Hey Doug, how You're are you? Still doing? driving a Crown Vic? No. No. I saw that. Four years ago. Crap. What? Well, uh, <laughs> this is the problem. Everybody's always getting cars. What do you got? You had an M3. One. Last time I, I, I saw talked the M3. to you. Well, you have the M3. I still. have the M3. That's it. Oh, that's all. That's all. Wow. That's all you need. Well, I guess. I mean, it's an M3. Yeah. does everything, um, except when it decides to not work. You ever considered getting a uh, Lincoln Town Two-wide car? convertible? Oh, you a nice Lincoln Town car, kind of step up from the old days of the it, crown. Only if I need a job chauffeuring people around. <laughs> I think right now I'm okay. Those are nice cars. They are they are the nicer Crown Vic, but mm-hmm. I would go Crown Vic because you don't have to give as much of a shit, and it looks like a cop car still. Although Explorer has taken over that part of our brain, so as long of, as it doesn't have doesn't have the crossbars, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have or the, the roof, roof rack, rack. That's yeah, how yeah. You know. But yeah. if you're looking very quickly in your rearview mirror, right, it's tough. headlights and some you, right, uh, right. Okay, sorry. Correction from the Lucid folks. Um, just wanted to follow up. Blah, blah, blah. The ba- the best metric for efficiency is miles per kilowatt hour of the battery pack. So the Mach E GT performance has 88 kilowatt hour pack, an EPA rating of 270 miles, which works out for three miles per kilowatt hour. Mm. Model S long range has a hundred kilowatt hour pack and a rating of over 400 miles, so just over four miles per kilowatt hour. The Dream range has 520 miles and 118 kilowatt hour pack, so 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Got it, okay. Uh, The Air GT does 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour, so that's how they measure efficiency. You think people care about that? No, and that's what I told the guy. (laughs) <laughs> that's what I told him. But isn't that? In a way, like, that's the new... I literally look. Look, here's my respond. My text. My in blue right there. Engineers care more about that than people do. But isn't that something like that's the new MPG in a way? Like kind this of. is the amount of energy, and this is how far it goes. So yeah. I think that's going to our talk about people yeah. have to like adjust their thinking. Like we have to adjust to. How yeah, do we something to brag about, but in the real world means nothing to someone who drives a car. I got a ton of hate because I didn't mention that the Hummer EV is not that efficient. It's not. It isn't, of course, <laughs> but. A, duh, and B, I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> and also, it's way more efficient than the trucks, the vehicles that people will be replacing it with, with it, you know? Like, guys are going to be coming out of giant Super Duties and Raptors and stuff, and obviously it's on a different level than that. Yeah, I just wrote a piece for the Intercooler. Andrew Frankel asked me to write something about these sort of uh, uh, rural targeted EV trucks, and, they, and he was like, you know, how are, how are they going to get people, and I said, by making them like 
incredibly antisocial. <laughs> yeah. Like heavier, bigger, right. faster, right. more ridiculous. Right. Like that's how they're going to do it. That Hummer EV, I think, is the coolest thing in the world. It is cool. I think it is cool. The crab walking thing is cool. I, I don't think I pull it off. You know, it's one of those it's cars. It's not for you. No, like no, I want a Raptor, but I I'm not a Raptor guy. You know, no, no, like you need a G wagon. You need a, your car, you need to drive a Barbie car. Like that's basically what you need to be driving. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> but like I see people in Raptors, and it's just not my thing. You had one. I it's not. I don't go down that. Uh, I don't think it's me anymore either. I think yeah. me. I think ten years ago yeah, yeah. it was me. Yeah. And I think. D- Eight years before that, the guy who drove a Hummer H1 was me then, and, right. and neither is me now. Right. But you yeah. know, when I see him, I look at him, I'm like, I wish, wish I could be that guy. You know. I drove the TRX, and I felt incredibly guilty the whole time. Same, but I love that car. <laughs> it's a hard one, because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, cars like that, even if you can afford the fuel, come on. Yeah. If you can send miles per it's just it's stupid. It's ridiculous, yeah. But it's cool. It is cool. It's so cool. It's hard to reconcile. How do you reconcile that? What pushed me over the edge was that me driving that car made other people's lives worse. If you park it in a parking spot, both people on either side of you have a harder time getting into their vehicles. <laughs> yeah, and that I know. was where I was like, "Yeah, this is not." Good. First off, I think that's a feature for some of the people who buy it. I know. Don't you agree? I know. Yeah. I know. And just generally, the li- you know how loud it is, and yeah, but it's antisocial. Cars are so cool. It's tough. Yeah. How do you? The Jeep 392 oh. offers that experience without that taking up more more space. You know than what you the need. problem with that 392 Jeep though is? It's not the Hellcat motor. I need 700 horsepower. <laughs> Did you when you drove it? Because I saw your video. Just, yeah. It looks. Was it a press car? Uh, yeah, it, yeah. I think it it's the same one we had. The yeah. blue one. When, when Zach and I when we were driving it. If you brake torqued it, like you were going to do a drag yeah. launch, it you could feel it twist. <laughs> And if you put a Hellcat motor in there, oh, I know. it would just go, I know. or a two-door. You know, it was interesting because they'd only offer that in four-door. And I was, there's a reason for that. You need yeah. a wheelie bar. They're not cool with that. <laughs> Somebody, people do it, I bet. Oh, yeah. Someone will do it. Yeah. Uh, Bru- um, what's his name? Um, AEV has been doing it. Yeah, right. They'll, they'll, they'll That's do a Hellcat true. Yeah, motor in a Jeep for you. Yeah. Right, yeah. That would be cool. They'll break. You'll break. You'll. It'll eat itself. It is a tough world. I feel like I need at some point soon. I got to get an electric car, and then I can have this guilt-free driving experience when I'm driving my daily car. But oh, and I, I can still drive stupid crap and feel okay about it. You drive around an electric car. Uh, my wife does more than I do, but you it, got an it's not. Car. I don't. Able I to... don't do it be, to feel like an environmentalist. That's not why I do. Oh, it. that's how I would do it. I do it because sitting in a, in traffic in an EV is is a pleasant experience. Right. That that's the only reason why I, really, I find it to be a pleasant experience. How does that uh, adaptive cruise, you know, self driving? How's that all working in that car? I've never once used the steering thing. Really? Never. What? I use adaptive cruise all the time. What do you do when you're not using the steering? Don't you sit in traffic? I steer. <laughs> steer the car. I use I use my you're hands. You're nuts, dude. I would never do that. The greatest feature in those cars is you don't have to do anything. I I don't trust that. When I'm on the way back. On the 405. Yeah. And bumper to bumper. Yeah. I ain't going to be doing anything. I'm going to be sitting there. You know, I actually had a crazy experience the other day. I was in one of the cars that really had a great self-driving system or a driver assist system, as I'm told to say. And I don't remember what it was, but I had the car driving for me. And I was in bumper to bumper on like the 101. And I rolled down my window to take a picture of a really clean E34 wagon. And I, you know, for my friends, I don't know. It's taking the picture and some guy leans out his window and screams, put your phone down and focus on driving. And I'm like... I, I didn't have enough time to explain to him the intricacies of the driver assist technology, but I was sitting there thinking, like, I am. Like, the car's doing it. It's fine. It's like, it's all good, dude. In the very slowest of bumper to bumper traffic, I'm fine with that type of stuff. Yeah. I, I really am. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, use the steering assist unless I'm going in bumper to bumper. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point. I, I just, I don't, I just, it, to me, babysitting a system is more work than just steering. Oh, I don't know. And I don't see that many cars I need to stop and take pictures of the traffic, <laughs> honestly. Oh, you live here. You 34 wagon. When was the last time you saw a nice one of those? Uh, they're not often. Right. Not often. But I would also, I'd be like, huh. Oh, I, I take pictures of everything. I know. That's why you're you. You're, <laughs> right. you're you because of that. That's how you ended up being you. It's I not just so. because you bought a video camera. Right. Right. Do people... I miss your writing. Thank you. I miss that, too. I'm a much better writer than I am a video person, but I don't know what to do about that. I mean, it's hard when video is what brings in the bucks, isn't it? Yeah. 
you know, you know I'm it's, sure it's amazing how quickly that turned. Now that you're very famous, I'm <laughs> sure any number of publications would happily give you a column. Well, yeah, but I'm not, I don't have time for that. I got to write the Doug's sure, takes. You got to write Doug's. <laughs> <laughs> this E46M3 is different from the 83 other E46M3s that we've sold. How do you how do you do that other than you know the cars I, I was worried about that but the cars all have kind of different stuff to them yeah um, and so you actually end up being able to this one's got a clean Carfax got a nice color combo you can you can end up saying how many stuff. Doug's takes do you write a day uh, I you have write one gotten for every single car yeah I write one for every car but I've gotten out of the point where I have gotten our editors to write them and then I simply go in and adjust them but I'm still adjusting every single car yeah I, and some of them I completely rewrite and they're based on stuff that I've written in about prior cars when I was doing it and so it still takes quite a while yeah but I don't know it's kind of fun it's I it's also well, to it, me it's really important I'm really active in this business it's really important for me to get a handle on like a like a touch every single car we have mm-hmm, on the site mm-hmm. and so I don't want anything to go up at me to be like uh, I don't yeah know. so I do a lot of the reserve setting but not all and then I do the Doug stakes and between one or the other I'll see every car yeah let's I mean it's, I'm glad that you have such like a fucking nice hustle going on there yeah man. it would have been nice to start this business though what this, this business yeah this business has its own its own I know issues. but now you're like you're good sure yeah I mean it's but it's all but there's there's stuff to do I don't just get to totally twiddle my thumbs would have been nice to do to snap my fingers and have this built <laughs> is that why you suggesting that's what I do? <laughs> it would have been nice to have you manage the construction process and me just swoop in at the end and yeah, reap yeah. the benefits Silent of it. Silent investor. Yeah. That's right. the problem with anything, including cars and vids. You know there's an really... enormous amount of work that is required sure. before anything even begins. Oh, yeah. I did five years of right. construction shit. What, I'm, what got me really excited was last week I had what we called 30% review for my second facility in Gardena. And... I brought like so much more to the table based on what we've learned yeah, here. Yeah. So when we're designing the wash and detail bay, I was like, no, 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 no. It has to be like this and this because of the current shop. Here's what happened to this. Yeah. And like all this stuff where it's like yeah. I'm bringing knowledge that I didn't really know I was gaining. When I start the, my next great. car auction website, I will have all this. <laughs> um, okay, a couple questions. Are you going to start like having a lot of these? Are you going to have like 20 of these? 50? Like I, McDonald's? No, I... I you know, I don't, I don't, I don't need to conquer the world. I'll, I'll just, I just, I just want to have a nice life with my family and and earn a living. And Do that's you it. have any regrets about calling it West Side Collector Car Storage, given that in it, it, it invariably you're going to have to expand past the West Side? Well, West Side could just mean West Coast. Uh, if I wanted to expand out of California, yes, but I don't want to. If do you that. cross the Mason Dixon line, that's we got a problem. Here's what I don't want to do: I don't want to give myself a flight. My oh. father spent a long time flying around the world looking yeah. at factories and stores, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. And this is a big city. It's a big county. I could have four or five of these places yeah. in Southern California, drive to them, yeah. and have a nice And they fill up. Everybody nice I know who started one of these or has one of these or whatever, it fills up. And they're always terrified that it won't. Yeah. And then it does. People need places to put stuff. I yeah. got my cars in one right now. People need places to put stuff. It's just kind of the way it works. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about where you put it. You know, it's, it, do, do you do you pick the right spot? If you pick the right spot where there's really a need, then yeah. and you and you have a attention to right. detail, right? And, yeah, if you got to be good. I mean, you yeah. can't just do it. Although I even wonder about that. Could you just wing it and still get cars? Maybe. <laughs> Listen, there's a couple that I've seen where I am. <laughs> shocked and horrified there's yeah. one opening in San Diego oh. and I saw the person the purveyor at Radwood who told me straight up I was like oh he's like, oh, I'm doing the thing you're doing storing cars oh cool oh, now you have to have those kind I of go did you did you get your lifts from Park Plus because Park Plus is the only pl- uh, company that can do triples and quads they have a special certification triples and quads in Southern California it's just them so he goes, no, no, I got him on Alibaba. I see. Alibaba. High quality product. Known for its high quality product. He then followed it up with, what's the difference? Steel is steel, bro. Steel is steel, bro. <laughs> Samurai I'm, sword. So you're fork, telling me not to whatever. use this guy to start. I'm right, telling right. you maybe <laughs> don't use the Alibaba lift guy. All right, well, Jeez, you'll have to give me his name a little later. I didn't get it, but you'll oh. know. He's the one who's got the lawsuit. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's the one who's got the stop work order. I, I have to tell you, I actually saw that you posted that on Twitter, and I was terrified. But then you mentioned that they were, you wanted triples and quads, and the space I'm in, they don't have space. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm I've good. seen a couple places that have doubles, one car on the floor and one above it, and the lifts aren't even bolted down, Oof. which is, in a seismic zone, a real adventure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not too worried about an earthquake. <laughs> Nor should you be in Southern California. No. It's not like we get those here. Look, the last one was 1994. That's big one. That's big one. Right, right. right. Yeah. So oh, your like... implication is that even a small one might knock off an unbolted lift. I, things small shimmy. One. Things shimmy. Small one might cause things to move a little bit. <laughs> All saying. right. Well, let's. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Just I guess. saying. You might want to bolt them to the ground. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that's an interesting point of view. <laughs> I've seen other places where people just move in. They don't put sprinklers. They don't put exhaust evac systems. I just, you know, um, to me, that's right. insane. You got to have all that to stuff. To me, that's it insane. Makes sense. You got cars running. Yeah. You got important, valuable things. You have humans breathing the right. air. <laughs> we've done an interesting thing in that we've taken this kind of audience that we have and turned it into a different yeah. pivot. Because Not everybody's I, done this. Because I think you and I have the awareness. Right. That the gig economy right. cannot possibly last forever. <laughs> right. I worry. Nor do we that. want it to? Right. Right. You know what I mean? Because I look at some of these other guys and I video, think, but I gotta get some more stuff. Do some more things. Well, there's there's younger folks who have these great audiences they've built and they're making great videos. They're showing great growth, and I'm just going, waiting. Yeah. Waiting for you to burn out on this. Right. You will. Right. Trust me. Do you, what do you think will happen first? They'll burn out, or they'll the audience will migrate someplace else. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. One is just as likely as the other, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? But it's all about it's about parlaying it into the the non gig economy. Yeah. You know? Right, right. And if you've got if you're training editors to write like you, <laughs> you're a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still really involved. I don't know of what the hell he's doing. All, all I really want to do is chill. I want to hang out with Noodle. Just kind of relax. You have a kid and a wife, too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, can just, they can be there. <laughs> but Noodle doesn't cause any... Noodle just sits. You know? That's pretty easy. <laughs> it's just, I, get, so no, I get funny. it. I get it. I understand every word you're saying yeah. right now. Yeah, I get I, it. Not just the surface level, but the subtext. <laughs> I 100. percent You know, babies are a little. It's, it's a lot going on there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Should we get to some of our Patreon stuff? Yeah. We should. We, we got, got questions. You got time? Oh yeah, I love yeah, these questions. Time. I, this is one of my favorite things about doing this podcast. Last time we didn't have any questions, and now we got them. We got oh, a good. bunch. Uh, questions all come through our Patreon. If uh, if you're listening to this now, it's too late. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. Uh, pocket sized. Uh, we will... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, what? what happened there? No, there. Pocket size says, are there any cars that either of you want to drive but have never gotten the opportunity to do so? Um, yeah, for sure. A bunch. Are you have you have you driven everything you've ever wanted to drive? Because that would be very sad, actually. Um, kinda. Really? Wow, that's sad. <laughs> You're done, huh? Just tapped out. The the videos that are now my popular videos, the ones that I look forward to the most, are new cars that are coming out, like Rivian and Lucid mm-hmm. and the Hummer EV, like the old stuff. Some of my viewers were mad because you know every year I make Doug Sember where I put my best videos up in December to take advantage of the higher ad rates. And some of the people were upset this year because it was all electric and new stuff, but I knew they would do well. But did they do well? They did incredibly, but that's like it. I've done the F40s. I've done the, those are, I can't do them again. You know? Yeah. Uh, the new stuff is the new stuff. Have I driven everything? I'd like to drive a Vector M12. I know a guy who's got one. An M12? Oh, an M12. Excuse me. No, I don't. I know a guy who's got a W8. I already did that. <laughs> <laughs> what, have you, what haven't you driven that you want to? Um, I mean... I never did an F50. I'd love to have a go in an F50. That would be really fabulous. Well. Um, I I never re I drove a Carrera GT for five minutes. I'd like to have a real go. Really, that's all. A real go in a Carrera <laughs> GT. It was like like when I like had the car wash. I drove like forever huh. ago, when it was basically a new car. Wow. Um, huh. Uh, I'd like to drive like. Some of the super special like R34s. Yeah, I've done some modified ones and I've done a stock one, but I've never done like the best that Nissan had from the factory. Yeah, but there's a it's a pretty limited 
it's a pretty limited of number of cars. Yeah, you know. You know, as I think about it, this, there is some stuff. Zonda. That, yeah, which Zonda. drives insanely well. Yeah, God, I, I bet that car. Um, there are some cars as I think about it, but they're all foreign. Like I want to do an Avent team. Oh, Remember that yeah. Renault Avent yeah. Avent time. But like stuff like that, it's weird stuff that was like Euro only. Two hundred five GTI I've never done. Stuff like that that yeah. I, it's hard to have access to. Yeah. Uh, Miguel Flores wants to know, uh, will Doug ever change up your video <laughs> style? You know, I think about this a lot. It's a good question. Um, you shouldn't. But it works. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. It's not like I don't necessarily want to, but I sit here and I look at the numbers and I look at other people's numbers and I'm still number one when it comes to reviewing new cars and I don't see a great reason why I should switch. People like it and they still like it. Um, I, I have I am starting to experiment and I will continue to with pulling down the in, the start of my videos to make them shorter to m get you into like the meat of it quicker which I think is becoming a bigger YouTube trend. But I don't know why why change what people are still this, we this, this December was my best guy. month ever. That's amazing. Good for you. We just had our analytics guy here and he found he 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 you know goes through all of our shit and basically was like your the formula. He said the, the the one thing that is sure to kick your channel in the dick is to change your the formula. That's the scary thing. That's speaking of which, watch our new show. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, watch our new show, All Cars Go to Heaven. Uh, which <laughs> is different. <laughs> which is different, and we have not been rewarded. The for problem that. is that YouTube rewards it's not necessarily a problem, but if you find a good rhythm and you do that, YouTube rewards you in perpetuity. Mm-hmm for that and if you don't you don't and you're trying to change it isn't necessarily a great idea i don't know mm -hmm. i i don't disagree but and plus at the end of the day the content is different every time the cars are still different and that's what people are interested in and so i think that to some extent some of the people watch me because the format is the same and they know what they're getting yeah and i think because this guy was like you, your style switched up a lot in the beginning and now it's the same it may have just been that your channel was new to him so he thought it was different there and were, like the, there, there is a consumer burnout that happens that's yeah. not the yeah. creator's fault. That's right. When you've seen them all. Mm -hmm. And that, another thing that I really try to emphasize to people but they don't understand, I'm sure you have this problem as well, you guys, um, not everybody watches every video. And so people are like, every video is the same. It's like, well, I do review, I review minivans sometimes. Like, they ain't watching the Koenigsegg, you know? Yeah, yeah. They want to get good advice on a minivan and that's what my format is pretty good about. So, like, if you watch every video, I could see how you get burned out, but it's it's a tough balance, especially, I think, for my channel, it's a tough balance because I'm I'm trying to make the enthusiasts happy who do watch every video and the consumers happy who want to buy a car, and that is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. There you go. Uh, Tom Russell, <laughs> what does Doug think of Aussie cars? Uh, they're really cool. The, the, I've only... Uh, had the chance to really do a couple, which was the Chevy SS, you know. I went to Melbourne a couple years ago, and it was really cool. And here's an amazing thing. I rented from, like, Hertz down there a Chevy SUV that had a steel bumper in the like rental a, car. Like a bash bar? Yeah. And they told me, I was like, you're putting steel bumpers on, like, Hertz. It was like Avid. It wasn't yeah. like a the Turo. They're like, there are so many kangaroo accidents oh. that it's cheaper for us to install steel bumpers on our rental cars. <laughs> Wow. So I'm driving around in like That's a- That's crazy. In a while. That is fucking crazy. So you've been. I have been. I'd love to go back and do more. There are a lot of really cool cars down there that you don't have access to here, but it's, yeah. it's quite far. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Um, uh, this is- uh, Brian wants to thank you for talking about miscarriages. It helps other people feel I appreciate less that. It was a tough year. Yeah. 20, 2020 was a really tough year for everybody, but also we, we had a lot of problems. Uh, but we're happy now. Yeah, good. Joe says, uh, <clears throat> can you elaborate on how the Model S Plaid is one point off the McLaren F1? That broke your rating Wait, system in, speed. In which way? Rating system, especially when the Lucid does the same thing. And but in, both, in yeah. which way? Is, is, is he saying that the McLaren F1 is too high or the Plaid is too high? The thing about the Plaid, the reason Plaid is so high ultimately is it does everything. It's an incredibly good car doing everything. It has the ability to carry a lot of people, and it has the ability to carry all your stuff, and it's the fastest accelerating car ever, and the technology is fantastic. And I know you hate Elon and Tesla and all that, but they're, 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 it's a great damn car. Well, it's a great all-around car. I hate liars. <laughs> And oh, fraudsters. So I, I I don't disagree with any of this stuff. I think the cult around Elon is like and awkward. They're also selling something that's not real. Yeah. 
So that's that's a problem for me. They're selling something that literally makes the roads more dangerous and justifying it by saying they make the roads safer. I agree with all that. So so I and but, I also parked a Model S Plaid the other day, and oh, I think the, the yoke. yoke is one of the worst. <laughs> does, I mean, the fact that nobody will just come out and say, "Listen, a circle was fine." <laughs> And this is actually worse. I think it's kind of cool. I also love how upset it's made everybody. <laughs> Car well, enthusiasts it's, hate it. Because it's worse. Yeah, but a lot of stuff is worse. Yo, Not come on. really. I <laughs> come mean, on. what's worse than that? Uh, well, a joystick would be worse. Who's I think. selling that? <laughs> Nobody, nobody. But from a steering wheel perspective, yes, the yoke has some issues, although I swear you can use it like a steering wheel. Just push on it. Push on the top of it. When you're doing a full all around, instead of just like going hand over hand, just start pushing on the top of it. It's, it's the same Why purpose. Why do we need to relearn how to Because <laughs> it's cool. The, the point is that it's cool. They think that it's cool. I'm not going to argue with you. I don't disagree with you, but like they're selling cars to people who are buying them largely on the pretext that they think it's cool. And that's kind of cool. I just I I just don't understand how a thing that's designed to be spun around and gripped because you're thinking about it from a two fun from two functional perspective. Why does the car? Why can you set it to make orchestra sounds when you hit the horn? Because, because they don't have anything else. <laughs> that's what you do when you don't have actual like innovation. Fastest accelerating car in the world. They're all fast. Yeah, that's that's what EVs do. They're all fast. I know. Fast. I know. And and that EV that was speed in 2012. Thing, that was the shtick. I agree. That that's EV not the speed thing now. is not because is, is become. Yeah, it's who gives a shit. Right. right. They're all fucking fast. I agree with that. But I think you've talked about this before. As the EVs basically become the same thing, because they all have a lot of torque and they're all really quick, then how do they differentiate themselves? So I hope this isn't a, the start of a trend where this is how they, <laughs> they separate They do weird themselves. stuff. They do weird stuff instead of really, you know, just the same way cars always differentiate themselves, like design, function, yeah. et cetera. But EVs are starting to do some really weird and different things, like the Rivian gear tunnel. Some of it is good like that. And some of it is a lot more questionable, like the yoke, and I agree with that. I mean, the, the yoke is a really bad design. It's a very poor design. <laughs> but a lot of stuff is bad design. Nothing is worse. I've <laughs> no, never seen anything worse nothing is than worse. That. What about, um, I, if I you thought You name on this, one I'm, bit of functional design that's worse than that uh, in modern cars. Uh, I could come up with some stuff if you okay. give me a minute. I'll, okay. think, I'll think on it as we continue. Right. How we, about we, brake we lights time. that are also turn signals? That's really mm -hmm. annoying. You're breaking or you're turning. Nobody really understands. <laughs> that is annoying. I agree. I, mean, I that's, like when they're separated. Thank you. Sure. It's not okay, as bad as the yoke. I agree, not but I that's not as bad as something that gets spun around and isn't a full circle. <laughs> it's not good, but that's a portion of that car. <laughs> that car has a lot. I it's think that car has a lot of great thing benefits. you interact <laughs> yeah. with as the driver of no, the car. No, there's, there's, look, you're not supposed to even be using the steering wheel. That car... <laughs> I can't give negative Matt's, points to Doug. Matt's, but. Hate, Matt's hatred for Tesla is 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 has cl I think it's clouded a little bit your judgment of this vehicle. No, it's not. Yeah, it's a cool car. It drives well. It's fun. If it, I by the way, I reviewed the Model S multiple times. Yeah. Okay. Before the fake self-driving thing. Yeah. And both times in 2012 and 14 or whatever it was, I had very nice things to say about it. Yeah. It was only when they started lying right. about self-driving. I agree with that. All that, by the way. It was only when they lied about the Cybertruck yeah. and took deposits for the roads so that don't exist. Right. And committed, in my opinion, multiple levels of consumer-grade fraud. You think that they knew the Cybertruck wouldn't come out when they said it would, and yes. they took the deposits. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Isn't isn't the Theranos woman on trial for something sort yes. of similar to that? Huh. And I also think that that th when you don't, when you have a great first first album. The Model S, but you don't have a follow-up, which yeah. they don't. Yeah, what about the three? It's just a smaller Model okay, S. Okay, fine. But but okay, smaller, fine. cheaper Model S. If you S. want to call, all right. But they I don't. Got there's it. no follow-up, right? Yeah. You got to keep the hype train going because they can't build. And so you think that the yoke is part of that? I will say one interesting thing that I've seen about Tesla um, to that point. Um, those cars were way ahead when they came out. Twelve. Remember that the sure. screen. I mean, it was yeah, yeah. far ahead. Every rational person agrees. Um, there are cars now that have better tech, yeah. that have longer range, like Lucid. Um, it's interesting. The advantage isn't there as much anymore. And you know, as much hate as we get on Twitter from Tesla people, and by the way, I get as much as you. Yeah, you I like I like the cars um, a lot. We're going to start getting more when we start reviewing other EVs and say that they're better. Well, Those people look, are going to get I, even yeah. more. Angry. I have found the Model Three and the Model Y, and and a Model S with a round fucking wheel. <laughs> Yeah. To be overwhelmingly pleasant experiences. Right. I'm happy to say that. They're overwhelmingly pleasant experiences to use and operate. I like the nav screen, right? I like some of their stuff, that some of their bits of design. 
I just think yeah. that it's dangerous to lie about people, to lie to people, and say that the cars are going to drive themselves because they're so fucking clearly not. Right. You saw that Balaban video? Yes. It was insane. Yeah. It was fucking insane. And you see the comments, people are like, this isn't how it really works. And like, oh. It's exactly how it works. <laughs> it's kind of how it works. It's it? really how it works. <laughs> yeah. And to try and say that a steering wheel should only have a bottom half, and that's an improvement. <laughs> An improvement. Not saying it's just weird for weirdness sake. To saying I have improved this is just fucking ridiculous. And oh, by the way, to put a swiping, the gear selector is a swipe on a touch screen. <laughs> yeah, look. This and is not good design. Have, don't have the strongest uh, reliability record. Too. That's right. Not Although good there design. is a backup hard button thing there if is. the screen, yeah. Um, it's yeah. just not good design. I agree. But the car is tremendous at what it can do, which is it's incredibly fast. It can carry everybody. I think it's relatively inexpensive considering the performance level. True. And the technology is fantastic. Full self-driving is obviously stupid, but it does have good autopilot. Um, there's a lot of great benefits to that car. That's fair. That, I agree. That's, that's fine. But and that's why I rank it, rank it so high. Because ultimately, my, my scoring system uh, heavily favors cars that are both good practical and high-tech cars and good performance cars. If you can do both of those things, you got a great car in your head. So I think a lot of people agree with, and the Model S is that. Sure. Uh, Andrew in Colorado, uh, as automotive journalists, do you feel like you've become more out of touch with regular car guys which who may not have the flexibility driving cars the two of you have do you feel like only weird stuff excites you after driving so many cars if so how do you try to keep how do you try to keep reviews relatable it's a good question you ever feel like that well i try to speak that when people ask me what i would do yeah Right, I no, drove I, everything. So. I want to know what you would buy. Right, right. I want to know what you, and then I try and throw it back on them, and I try and say, I'm not you. Right. What are your needs? Yeah. Where do you live? How many people do you have to carry? What is your budget? And I'll help you based on my experience driving all this shit. If you want to know, what would I buy? A 1988 Lamborghini Countach. Does that help you? <laughs> You know what I mean? Right, like right. so I try to not I try to make it about me yeah. as little as possible. Yeah, yeah. That's an interesting. And like point. granted, yeah, like I don't have a sixty mile commute. So I don't know what it's like yeah. to drive one car. It is 40, weird that you get those year. questions, what would you do? And it's like, well, what's your budget? I mean You're not me. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. what would I do? I'd start eating healthier at a younger age. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> 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 right, I agree. I, that's a good point. Um, I will say to that question, for a long time I felt I wasn't losing touch, and I still feel that way about performance cars, even like Golf R, WRX. Like, I still think I can evaluate those just as objectively, just as good. As, but when it comes to little crossovers, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, People come to me and they say, should I get the CX-5 or the RAV4? And I'm like... Do you just go, there's literally no difference? I say stuff like that sometimes. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Like, and maybe that would makes me out of touch. I don't know. But I'm okay with being out of touch in that realm, probably. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people often to buy the one that the dealer's closer or, you know, which salesperson was nicer. I mean, I don't... Or if there's something that you think is... You're not making a mistake in either of those cars. Performance cars, I don't think I lose. But I think it's, it's just hard for me to distinguish between those things anymore. Well, there, there's a lot of, you know... Just sameness, yeah, right. Especially with with small crossovers yeah. or, or whatever. Or you get the A four, the three series. Like, dude, you know, right. get the ones where the buttons feel nicer in right. your hands. Like, right. it just doesn't matter. Yeah, um, yeah. It only really starts. My only opinion only starts to really matter when we are talking about those enthusiast cars. Yeah. And I still think I can do a good job evaluating. I can too. I can yeah. review a fucking BRZ. Yeah, like it's. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Too out of touch no. to, to. That's to mostly that what I'm doing is stuff like that. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Uh, Doug had, Dante <laughs> says, Doug, how did you like visiting GM's proving grounds and what did you find interesting about it besides Hummer? You ever been there? Is that the Lutz Ring? Which, uh, which yeah, it's, Milford. it's in Milford. Milford You've yeah. been up there? Yeah. It's insane. It's cool. It's You know how big it is? <laughs> it's like the size of a county. Yeah, yeah. The Ro Ford Romeo one is that big too. Really? It's huge. Yeah. They're like, oh, you go here to this building. I'm like, oh, I'll figure this out pretty easy. I don't need to look at their directions. They sent me a map. Oh my God, what a mistake. I had to take a bus. Once I got there, I had to take a bus to where I was going. Yeah. And we've been to the Hyundai one in the middle of the desert, too. No, but I've heard about that one. That yeah. one's cool. 
Yeah. Like, holy crap. Yeah, I didn't know the fucking huge it is. Look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like a Nardo ring next to two road courses. Wow. There's a lot going on up There's in Milford. Lot. Yeah. It's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. You see a bunch of prototypes running around? Yeah. Yeah. Weird stuff. And Chinese cars. I'm walking in, and there's like a Chinese Buick SUV that I've never seen. And I'm like, stare. it's like a mid-sized crossover, you know? Yeah. And the woman who's meeting me is like, okay, come on, we got to go. And I'm like, but, <laughs> but look at this. You're, you're like, but is this the Hong Kong <laughs> ambassador? <laughs> I, I would kill to review Chinese cars. Maybe I should send their PR team a note. I've always wanted to review a Chinese car and just have the title be review a Chinese car. <laughs> Like, you know, they sell them in Mexico now. Because what's the difference which one it is? Yeah, really. <laughs> like, Although that market is really starting to, they're starting to do differentiation in India too. Yeah. But they sell those things in Mexico. I would give anything. I've done a few Mexicans have come over the border and I've reviewed their car. I did a GR Yaris and a Jimny and I really want to do a Chinese car. Yeah. But the people who buy Chinese cars in Mexico aren't the people who are watching we, the uh, Our friend Thaddeus lives in Dubai and oh, he yeah. travels around that part of the world filming. And in that part of the world, if you get a rental car, it's a Chinese car. Uh, All, they're in the rental fleets. And so oh. he sends us the craziest videos of these cars <laughs> that are such shit boxes, <laughs> but they're like trying to not be. Right. And there's got these weird animations that go on in the fucking <laughs> MMI. And like, you know, it, this one looks just like a Lexus RX 300, but then you open the engine and you can just see the ground because the engine. Because <laughs> they so needed it to look like that, but it didn't have. <laughs> and it didn't have like a three cylinder. It had some <laughs> tiny engine. It had this tiny like little engine, engine in it. Are you kidding? Yeah, How that's bizarre. Crazy. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I would love to shoot some of those The cars. videos he sends us are insane. I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. Probably they're not all crap, but I bet some of them are really crap. Yeah. That's oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Nathan uh, will be a dad, a new dad in April, and wants your Doug's hot take on fatherhood. <laughs> uh, the first two weeks are the hardest, absolutely impossibly difficult, but after that, it's gotten progressively easier, and it is wonderful, and I, it's been a great experience so far. Uh, okay, anonymity with a website as simple as Cars and Bids. What evolution could there be to the space with so many competitors? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, uh, we want to grow. Our, our feeling is that um, the market is still there for this. There's still more and more and more people who are selling their cars in other ways. And I, we really think well, this is the best People are more and more it. used to fucking buying shit online. Which is right? a great thing. And I yeah. think that's one of the big ways that you can, that you can expand. Um, in terms of distinguishing ourselves, we just added financing. You can get financing through the site now, which oh, is really? a really cool thing, yeah. um, through Lightstream. And I mean... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think the real distinguishing factor is choosing really cool cars that are interesting and crazy, and and people seem to like the variety that we have. So, and obviously showing that we have a well done website that works well and is easy to use and all that stuff. And I think we've done all that. Cool. Uh, Daniel Hunsiger uh, for both Matt and Doug. Uh, what are some of the biggest examples of car owners not fitting the stereotype? Um, Car owners generally fit the stereotype. <laughs> the guy who gets out of the Raptor is the guy I expect to get out yeah. of the Raptor. Um, who doesn't fit the stereotype? I mean, hmm. It's rare that I encounter a specific situation in which the car owner is, I'm like, oh, huh, I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think in L.A., in my personal experience, there's a lot of people who own Porsches that aren't the traditional stereotype, but are more of the, the modern stereotype. There's mm, yeah. tattoo artists right. and guys in the weed industry right, and musicians. Right, right. And, we didn't and, cover Porsches on this, and my hatred for the latest Porsche culture and your kind of embrace of it, I, I was, we should have done Well, it. it's not my, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why? I need, I what, need a different score. What, just in can't what way stand do you hate the paint to sample crowd oh, and okay. the stitching crowd and the Gunther work stuff. Well, and, well I didn't you buy a Gunther well, work, no, you so get I'm just my driving point. it. I'm just kind of, don't you remember when we were younger that Porsches, you, you drove them? Yeah. Now they talk on Renlist about what stitching they got on their parking Well, some bike. people do, but I think the, a pe lot of the people, people that I hang out with yeah, tend yeah. to drive their cars. But I, you get I, my point. There's a I big yes. number yes. of those people now. But Porsche is the only... First off, I think they make nice cars. Yeah. I, I think they make a the, high-quality the product. Yeah. They're also the only company, really, that allows you to get deep into that level of customization. Yeah. And that is interesting. Yeah. I think to me. I mean, I guess Ferrari and Lamborghini well, do with enough money, but you're, money, but you're spending twice as much. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could you, you can get a fucking Macan like crazy spec if you want. So, yeah. I think in some ways I understand 
you know, how, that people want to differentiate themselves a little bit. I, I'm not on the forums, so I don't. But you know what I'm talking about. I you, do. I do. It's crazy. Some of the, the there's there's pages and pages of people talking about what stitching color but that, they but should That's true of like yeah. any hobby, like cars, guns, computers, yeah. anything where you can change parts of it where it will keep functioning as it was intended to, but I, you can tweak things and make things that's different. That's true. We will do it because we, we want to separate ourselves and yet be part of the club. Just kind of remember when Choose. Porsche didn't have 50,000 options and you bought the car because you just wanted to bang on it. Like It was still true and through the mid-2000s. I mean, Courage GT wasn't even that much. Cayman, all those cars back mm. then, 996, 997. And now Porsche has realized that their customers will buy any stupid thing that they come up with for any amount of money that they charge, and they're really exploiting the hell out of it. Sure. Uh, you know, I just reviewed this Cayman GT4 RS. Yeah. Vysock package, $13,000. If you spend that money, they allow you to get magnesium wheels, which are $15,000, <laughs> which also require $3,000 and other stuff. So to get those wheels, you spend in thirty one thousand dollars in addition to the hundred and forty five thousand dollar base price of a Cayman. Wow. So people are gonna walk out of the dealership with a two hundred thousand dollar Cayman. That's insane. I don't have a lot of interest in the GT4 RS. Really? Actually. Because it's not stick. Yeah, I know. What a mistake. Porsche was like, oh, none of our RS cars are stick. It's consistent. It is consistent, but it's it doesn't personally interest me. Same. I'm I'd glad. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm glad they built it. So it seems really fast. Good for them. Right. I'm sure they'll sell every single one at 100k over. Well, that's the other. So you get now. There's this culture that's built around Porsche of I have to have this newest one to yeah. show off to the other guys who also have who also are into Porsches and whatever. I just it's a, to me it's kind of a they, shame what has become of that brand. It seems like they've adopted by accident or whatever. Like. The culture that Ferrari was known for yeah. before, or yeah. other exotic car. Companies. And for years, Porsche was known for specifically not being that. Right. Like you could go buy a Porsche, you could drive it, you could go to the Porsche club meetings and have people who really would go on a drive with you, as opposed to stand around in their Ferrari shoes and their Ferrari hat and all that dumb stuff. In their de- not their defense, but as a counterpoint, when we were up in the canyons, whenever we see groups of cars go by, I would say the number of the percentage of times it's a group of Porsches is probably fifty percent compared yeah. to another group, and it is never a group of Ferraris. Like there's some, there uh-huh. might be a group where it's. A mix Lambos of cars. would be yeah. number two. Maybe them, but like Huracans would the, be number two. We, I've seen five, six Porsches going out for drives yeah. together. No, a lot. I, I'm very, very careful to point out. I should have been that this is not apply to everybody who has these cars. They a lot of people who do this are still in that world, but it's just I know what you mean. There used to be the cool band, and now people came over, and so now it's still the cool band. But there's also people there that are just there because it's. The cool and maybe band. that's the wrong attitude to take. Maybe I'm gatekeeping this too much, like saying like, oh, I like Porsche before it got cool with the like, you know, this crowd. But I, don't I know. mean, the, I did. look, the cars are for for the way they perform. They're very usable, also. Yep. And the fact that you can customize them from the factory is, especially in this part of the world, you know, a car is an accessory here. A right. car is an outfit here. Right. So it's not that weird to see that kind of scene develop here. Yeah. Um, I, I, you're not wrong, but. In my experience, the people who own these cars, although there's definitely some flippers and there's some ridiculous collectors and there's people who obsess over collar combinations, whatever, a lot of folks drive these cars and, you know, we go to a Cars and Coffee that's on Fridays that's in the Angeles Forest, 50 miles out there, and you see people romping the shit out of these things. And so, um, you know, I think there's there are two sides to it. And although that community exists, some of those people that have paint to sample shit also yeah, are yeah. In, into driving. Them. Yeah, I so, guess I get that. You know, you know. Um, but you, I think to go back, I think you're you're right. People typically do fit the stereotype. Yeah, that's how you got there. In the right, first right. Place. Yeah. Uh, Joe says, what's your favorite car that you wish had a manual gearbox? Uh, interesting. Vector W8. <laughs> I wish it didn't have a three-speed auto. A three-speed auto. Um, actually, that, that transmission wasn't that bad. The, um, Alpha 4C. Mm, yeah. Alpha God, that's a great a one. one. Yeah. GT4 RS is definitely out there because I think that would make that car just perfect. Um, Did you actually get to drive the no, GT4 no, no. RS? Yeah. The, uh, a Ferrari 458 yeah. with a manual would be exceptional. Right. It would be absolutely 430 with a stick so cool. And having one more yeah. generation of oh modernity and... Imp- 430 with a stick was like one of the greatest driving experiences yeah. you could ever have. Absolutely. I mean, such a the, that when you it, that's it's not just a shame that manual gearboxes have gone away. It's that some people that did them so well. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. When you do that's them, so true. You know what I mean? It's not just that sticks are gone. It's that some of them were so perfectly engineered. Yeah. 
And the Ferrari that, manuals in the 360 and the 430 yeah. were brilliant. Oh, so great. They were so good. Uh, Hunter Sands, Doug, do you see cars of late scoring higher overall on your charts or do their old counterparts still hold strong? Uh, yeah, you know, generally speaking, the cars do a little bit better as they progress. And also, I, I edit the scores. Uh, like I said when I originally announced it, I edit the scores a little bit. So, like, the technology score doesn't stay a 9 if that car starts to fall behind a little bit. And so the newer cars kind of come in and replace. I will say electric cars are getting higher scores than I've ever had before because they're able to combine this performance and practicality in a way that previous cars, like, really weren't able to. So Rivian, mm. Lucid, they're doing these incredible acceleration numbers and, and have some pretty impressive things. But also... The they're able to be super practical in a way that we haven't really seen. Yeah, I mean, you can buy a couple different 10-second fucking dragster Isn't sedans that nuts? now. Yeah. Like, yeah. holy crap. You used to need this for 10 seconds. And what's Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. You used yeah. to have to have that exact thing. We're and even then... We're pointing at a fucking muscle car with a giant blower coming out of the hood on sitting on our Even table. then, you'd show up at the drag strip and it would get one pass and then need like a rebuild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Nick uh, says, Doug and Matt, uh, I'm getting married to my best friend on Wednesday. Uh, what kind of advice do you have uh, now that you both have some years under your belt? I've heard Matt talk about this a little bit. How do you talk with your significant others about large, mostly personal purchases like watches and cars? Oh, okay, that's an interesting one. Matt, you've been married how long now? I got married April 2019, How's but it we gone? were together for five years before that. Yeah, has anything been different since you got married, you think? Um, no, not really. I mean, being married, like, is not really any different than it right. was before, other than, like, we bought a house together, so we're working on that, and, like, right. there's some, like, you know, comb combining finances, but... But my wife makes more money than I do, so <laughs> right. that's a that's a dynamic that not, not a lot of people, men, are used to, um, which to me doesn't bother me at all. Advice for marriage communication. It's the best advice. Sure. It yeah, really talk. is. It's a cliche. No, it's, that, it's, it so is. People but, who but, fail are bad communicators a lot of the time, I think. Yeah. And I heard uh, recently, I was listening to the radio, and they were talking about um, what made some a lot of marriages fail. And it was like um, financial strain from disproportionate spending habits. Yeah. One, one person would just really spend way more money than the other, and, yeah. and that caused some tension. And Yeah, so, finance is a big thing that causes problems. Yeah. So we're yeah. very lucky that we don't have yeah. to. Dual income, no kids here. So yeah. So we're, right. we're doing all right. Got cats, though. Uh, Dan B, given the vast number of cars reviewed by the three of you, if you had to buy huh. one car to be your only car to daily and have fun with, what would it be? One car, only car? I can't I can't even live like that. Uh, the answer is I'd get an AMG wagon or an RS6, one yeah. of the, uh, probably an AMG wagon, but yeah, it'd be tough. Maybe I a Land Cruiser. I can't live like that. I mean, AMG <laughs> yeah. wagon is a good one, but but, like, but still, I had those, and I get bored of them. They they don't handle like a car, you know. It's not quite the same. No, but it's for, the best. For it's me, the, best the variety that can do it all. is the thing. Right. You know. Right. That, that's but if I had about. to, that would be it. Yeah. Same answer. Yeah, because it has rear-wheel drive mode. Is that right? They have the new one. The yeah, E63 AMG wagon did. I'm trying to convince my wife to get the yeah. all-terrain. You seen that? The mm -hmm. the the Mercedes Outback. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's thing. cool. I don't know if it's cool. Everyone should make an Outback. <laughs> they all are they now. All the V90, yeah. you know, it's like a thing now. <laughs> I had the V90 cross country. It was all right. Yeah, was, the interior was lovely. Yeah. The, the Volvo engines are a little weird for me. I don't love them. Yeah. A lot it's of a lot, turbo supercharging. A lot going on. Right. It's yeah. a little much. A lot going on. Uh, Mr. Nailhead wants us to know there might be further C8 Corvette delivery delays. The tornado in Kentucky damage the assembly plant. Well, that's a I'll tell you something, though. C8s. Have you been following this market? Are they insane? Is it insane? No. Oh. So CarMax, <laughs> CarMax right now in their inventory nationally has 50. That's a lot. That yeah. seems like a lot. And my view What is, are they priced at? Like, over MSRP, but like everyone who wants one at this point can get... Like there's no like, I got to find, you know, I got to pay on eBay 75 over. That stuff's done. C8s are around. The, I, I, I did hear that that plant was damaged. It's going to be a problem. But like C8s are around. We're starting to go way back on reserves when they come on cars and bids. Mm. It's it's not like it was. Corvettes are they're yep. Corvettes. Yep. I mean, that's what makes them. Yep. <laughs> and everybody's like, no, this Corvette's different. It's not no. going to be dentist driving it. Give it to you. Availability is what makes yep. Corvettes not Porsches. <laughs> that, that's, that is so. Did you just. Is that a thing you just come up I with? I always here? say this shit. I think that's exactly right. Availability is what makes Corvettes not Porsches. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. They're everywhere. Just wait. And you see them everywhere. They will make literally every single one yeah. they can sell yep. and then three more after yep. that. <laughs> Remember when ZR1, C6 ZR1s were being offered with huge discounts? Yeah. That'll happen again. Yeah, it'll happen. 
it's hard to believe now. But in it'll three be. years, you can walk into a dealer and buy a Z06 right now. <laughs> yep, for five under. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. going to happen. It will happen, <laughs> yes. And that car looks fabulous. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. New Z06 looks amazing. Yeah, no, they're amazing. I love the regular C8. But I like, think it's amazing. It, the but C8 is great. I love driving it. That was awesome. They clearly took apart a 458 yeah. and then put a small block in it. Yeah. And they're like, this is the car. It's an interesting point. Um, yeah. Doug, have you? Uh, Duncan says, have you seen any of the Doug DeMuro <laughs> on crack meme videos? Yeah. I'm very memeable. You ever get in you memes? Are. People's, nah, I'm not that funny. For a long time, there was a TikTok <laughs> meme where, you know, I say this at the start of the videos, yeah. where it would like show, say, I would be saying this over someone showing stuff. I don't mm. know. But it was really something. Yeah, there's a lot of Doug memes out there. I, I showed this to my wife like two years ago and she flipped out. She's like, what? I never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> ID, please, for more info, go to. <laughs> what does that say when she shows her quirks of feet? Oh, yeah. There you go. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah, weird. Uh, how did that happen? I, I mean, your know. comment section funny. is really fun because I like, I'm not in that world enough where I know all the like lingo and the terms they've created. It's right. kind of like Tom Segura's like audience. Segura's, oh yeah, my yeah. god! But it's fun to go in there and see that that's developed. Like I just think that's fun for you. It means like you've hit right. a certain level. I guess and that's so. Rad. I think it's rad. How weird! I really thought that these people would be lost to TikTok, but they weren't. Uh, Matt and Zach would love to have you do a show with RCR again. Uh, they have an open invite. All those boys have to do is tell us they're coming to town. Open invite. Um, Brian Reeves, we have a. We're not going to make it through all these. Holy <laughs> fuck! There we're not getting, seven pages. Yeah, we're not getting through all these. Uh, Brian Reeves, what super low volume or experimental one-offs would you like to drive or wish made Dude, it into Juke production? Juke R, I would kill the drive. Remember that thing? Going a Juke R, uh, you know, yeah. actually, it's actually it, this is a funny question. I love super low volume and I love concept cars, and I've always wanted to drive concept cars. And mm. every time the automakers call me up and like, hey, can you do this, whatever, I'm like, okay, can I drive a concept car? And of course they're like, no, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. We're not, you know, can I drive a concept car from ten years ago? Yeah. They're like, no, we don't care about that anymore. But I would give anything. Yeah. It, during GM's bankruptcy, they sold off a I bunch know. of the concept cars with Barrett Jackson. Yeah. And I got a bunch of their VINs and I Carfax them here and there. Some of them are like J driven? Jiffy Lube. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, I, I want to be a part of this. <laughs> I want that this thing. Rules. <laughs> yeah, I would buy a concept Remember car. Remember the like, Ford Focus concept car? Remember this thing? Oh, oh my God. God. That thing. Wow. That. How cool Focus. would a video be on that? Now, 80% yeah. of these things don't run and never did. Yeah. But still. The, the, I remember love the, the Indigo, Pontiac the GT90? The Indigo, oh my God. I would love to drive the Ford. I think that, that was a driver. Yeah, and it comes up for sale every so often. The GT90 for sure. All these yeah, are bill of sale so only. Cool. Ford Indigo rules. Look at that. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and I would kill to review it. Yes, I agree. There are so many. Bro the, the, my very favorite one is the Ital Design Columbus. Do you know about this vehicle? Oh, yeah, I know that one, yeah. Or the I like the Pontiac Banshee. The Banshee which was, was amazing. then ruined and became the Sunfire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, look at oh this. Look at this God, beautiful look at that car. Fucking thing. I made a video about how much I want to shoot this, and Ital Design reached out to me, and they were like, "We still have this thing, and we can get it running if you come to Italy." Really? And I was like, "Yes." That would be. It's like a double decker minivan. <laughs> Hell yeah! Right. You could. You would take. I would take a vacation with the wife and combine with this to tax <laughs> the doctor the... expenses. Yeah, that's amazing. I would do that. I'd like to do a. Uh, a what was the other one? I'd like to drive the G the GM Parade of Progress Future yeah, Liner bus, totally, or one of the Fire. Bird motor, like some Motorama yeah. jet age shit. And there was some weird, they didn't know what was Fuck coming. Fuck yeah. Yeah. When they were like, oh, let's just make it look like a rocket, you know, whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, let's see. Ryan West says, with prices for E46 M3s continuing to go up, is it a terrible to buy one in the eighteen dollars to $24,000 range? Decent SMGs go for this and then do the manual conversion would be also budgeting for an eventual rebuild. That's a good question. We sell stick swapped E46 M3s a lot on cars and bids and they do bring more. They do. I don't know what a rebuild costs. I wish you put it in there. I don't know. Zach, do you know what it costs to convert an SMG Or what a conversion uh, really, yeah. yeah, it's like two to three thousand dollars. I mean that's worth it. Shop. That's probably that worth, is it. worth it. It's a lot of yeah. parts. And and manuals parts. are getting hard to find and they're getting really yeah. expensive. Nice ones as you see. And there's seen. enough there's enough factory parts left to do it, right? It's honestly, not like if, they're yes. doing janky ass conversions. Honestly, right? if you're getting if it's only two to three grand, I wouldn't be surprised if you see that back. We we've sold some manual conversions that went for way more than we thought. Because we were initially putting reserves at prices like SMG cars would, uh -huh. which is how it is for some like Ferraris that have been stick swapped. It's not always well, no, this isn't the case. The Ferrari the, people are very pure. Right. Well, they it turns out the M3 guys just want three pedals. Yeah. <laughs> they don't give a shit. <laughs> Let's do it. No, Ferrari people don't, don't fucking want right. any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I would say, I mean, if it's only two or three grand to swap it, 
you know, your experience when you have the car will be better. Yeah. Because just driving it will be better. And if you make even 50% of that back right. on the yeah. resale. Right. Even if it is on the resale, it's totally worth it for 1500 I mean, bucks to have a stick. I converted my Aston Martin to a stick, and it cost way more than that. Right. <laughs> and it was still – and it and in the long run, it has paid off a lot. Yeah. Because being a manual – is a big deal yeah. for collectors, yeah. and so I mean I don't know what an eventual rebuild goes for, but like, but that's probably true of a stick or an auto. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Aaron White sell uh, good drives in California, other than Angeles Crest and PCH. I mean, dude, the Central Coast roads. You know, there's yeah. so many. The 58. Right, the 229, the 58, the 33, the 25. <laughs> um, we just did this. We literally, we just did this route. We did, you come, coming down from Paso Robles, right? Coming, you go through Paso Robles, you come down and you do the 229 to the 58 to the 25. Or no, it's, excuse me, the 25 into Paso Robles and then 229 to 58 to the 33. And it's delightful. Central Coast. That's, that's the good one. Uh, duh, oh, Myron Vernus. He gets oh, a question Myron, for sure. The best. Doug, what's the greatest lesson you've learned from your first couple of years at Cars and Bits? You want to know what the greatest lesson is? Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> you know what's interesting? Like, there have been a bunch of these car auction websites that have popped up. Some that have, I guarantee, never even made it on your radar. But we watch all this insanely. Yeah, we've yeah. seen them come. We've seen them go. It ain't easy. If I know how hard it was going to be, I would, I'm not sure I would have done it. We're easier now. We got all the right people in the right place. It's easy. Not easy, but it's a lot easier. And... Um, there's a reason they all fail, which is how do you convince people to go to leave, bring a trailer, knowing how strong it is, unless you have an audience? Yeah. And you can build the greatest website in the world and have it work incredibly well, and you can do all these incentives to get people on whatever, but if the people aren't there to sell and buy, it ain't happening. Yeah. And so the, the greatest lesson is, I don't want to say we're never going to have another competitor or whatever, but like... This ain't easy, and and people people see Doug with his stupid shorts standing next to the car with his little iPhone filming. Oh, if he can do it, I can do it. No, you can't. <laughs> not yeah. saying that it's impossible. I'm not trying to be arrogant here. It's really hard. Yeah. And that first year was um, one of the toughest experiences of my life. That summer of 20 was really tough <laughs> when we launched. Doing this shit ain't easy either. Totally. And it, people it, see, and they're like, Oh well. Yeah. You got a building. It's yeah. That wasn't easy. <laughs> You, poured, okay, poured, you make it then. We poured 160 concrete trucks in one day. Right. <laughs> we did. Wow. The foundation. Holy crap. 160 concrete How trucks the in one that? day. This is the only time in my life I've caused the traffic. I was the problem <laughs> that day. Everybody does, everybody's allowed that one. I, got the, I, I apologize to the city. <laughs> today, it's my, today it's me. It's never me until this one fucking time. Yeah. Uh, Doug, do you ever go back to Emory to speak or participate in alumni events? I went to Emory University in Atlanta. I love Emory University, and I love Atlanta. I miss it so much, and I beg my wife to move back there all the time, although she reminds me that what I really want is San Diego weather in Atlanta, which is not, which is not, they don't, it's not it what works. they have. Yeah, it does not have uh, it. Yeah, but no, I haven't been back, but I would love to, and I do occasionally do stuff with the Alumni Association, and I'm obsessed with Emory in Atlanta. Any excuse I can get to go back there, I do. I don't do anything with Penn. Really? No. Oh, Screw why that. not? What do you mean, Cause. screw that? They put you here. <laughs> <laughs> that degree you got, what degree is it again? <laughs> uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts. In what? Photography. Oh, really? Well, yeah. th- what do you mean you don't screw pen? You're doing this. You're doing the stuff they taught you to do. I know. Well, But they asked me for money. I'm going to give them a $25 donation in your in name. name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do anything. Send it to the photography I'll program. Give you a, a screw I don't do on in one building. <laughs> well, yeah, true. Uh oh this oh this question's kind of boring. Have you done any <laughs> off road experience in your Defender? Yeah, I've done a ton of off roading in the Defender and it is incredibly good. You know, it's so funny. People are always like, Oh, the new Defender is not, not a real Defender. You get that? No. Uh, I've I mean, off roaded extensively. Maybe they said that, but I didn't pay attention. I've off roaded extensively in the old one and the new one. The new one's way better. Yeah. Way better. The new, we've done off roading in the short and long wheelbase new defenders, and they're fantastic. They're amazing. Yeah, they're it's fantastic. incredible. Some of the stuff it's done, I'm blown away by how capable it is. Yeah. Um, Rich basically says, "Do you miss winter driving?" <laughs> uh, no. Hmm. Not even the the donuts. Really? No, I don't I miss, miss it all it. the time. Really? Yep. I liked it. I really did. Uh, 
I hated the feeling of not knowing anything. You might slide around or whatever. Well, well, I think that, that was always exciting. You're like, ooh, what's today going to be like? <laughs> I don't want to be you know, a part we're of gonna that. Get stuck. We're not going to get stuck. It's more problem solving. <laughs> what's today going to be like? We're very different. Based on you're like, I'm in bumper to bumper, and I just love taking pictures of cars. And I'm like, I want uh, unknown surfaces ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to to really put a lot of effort into driving unless I'm having fun with it. I hate sitting in traffic. I hate doing commute. I don't, I just kind of want to relax. Gotcha. Uh, the remainder of the questions we're going to choose based on ones that I yeah, think are oh, interesting. Okay. Matt says, how big is your YouTube channel team? <laughs> is there, is Take it, a guess. Is you, guys, I think it's just you. Guess? Two. No, I have, my best friend is also my assistant, uh-huh. but she's, you know, it's like a contract where, you know, it's not like full time. And then I have an editor named Nick, who's the greatest guy in the world, and he lives in Arizona. And he's also a contract, like he's not full time either. And that's it. I Perfect. show up at these shoots and people send me emails. They're like, hey man, does your crew need anything? Yeah. Do you need to get like coffee for your crew? I'm like, no, the crew will be all right. Thank yeah. you. And it's just you. <laughs> it's just, when I show up to film, it's just me. Yeah, yeah. The more people, the more Complication. A hundred percent. Um oh boy. Uh all right, here's Sheeply uh TJ. Rank the oh. generations of M three from best be a, to worst. This is gonna be a very controversial answer. What do you think? I'll let you go. I uh best to worst. I would say E forty six is best, ninety is below that, thirty is below that. F80 is below that, 36 is below that, and the current one is at the bottom. I think the current one's the best one. You do? Yeah. How come? That's all the time we have, Doug. <laughs> I'm just going to... I'll tell you why. E30 was underpowered. I'm just going to kill this mic. <laughs> Zach just cut his mic off. <laughs> E30 was underpowered. Everybody sure. agrees about that. I love yeah. that car, but it was underpowered. Yeah. E36 also was underpowered, in my opinion. And there were a lot of them were automatic convertibles, let's be honest. But uh, they were underpowered as well. E46 and E92 are great cars, but they had problems. They had serious problems. E46 had subframe issues. They both had the Vano stuff. They had rod bearings, the E92s. They were problematic cars. They, and, and even now, you when you go buy one, you have to find a lot of, make sure a lot of stuff has been done or prepare to do a lot of it yourself. Oh, I'm sure the new ones will be bulletproof forever. Well, no. maybe, maybe it won't. And that's <laughs> yeah, part of the problem. But the F80 I don't like because I thought it was too big. I like the new car. I think it, the new car is I, bigger than the F80. Yeah, but it doesn't drive as big. I swear it doesn't drive as big. The F80 feels like you're sitting in a hot tub driving around. Okay. I think the new car is cool, and also they're doing a stick sedan with you know non plug-in hybrid. Like this is it. This is it. This is the end of the line. I know it's heinous, and it is. It's heinous. But this Incredibly is it. Heinous. This will be the last M3 you can ever buy like this. The next one will not be a stick, and I bet after that they won't even have gasoline engines. Like this is it. All right. Don't you kind of think that way? I, I mean, think that I'm, statement's true, but it doesn't mean it's the best because the E90 was a manual with a stick, and the F80 also came with a manual, or sorry, I manual know, sedan, manual F80. sedan. Yeah. So I like how the F80 you got to take those things off. But that, that's fine. I guess fine. it remains to be seen what happens from a reliability perspective with the current car. But those, those, I loved those cars in the early 2000s and the late 2000s, the E90, the E46. They're probably objectively the best, but boy, do they have a lot of it's their that's headaches. True. That's true. Sure. Okay. Uh... Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm scrolling. Uh, uh, I thought this was interesting. Okay, Chris Amaru, would Doug ever participate in an industry-wide effort to standardize how cars are rated in <laughs> reviews? Oof, that sounds terrible, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. Because why would you? Why would you want? Why no, would you the, want that? The perspectives of each person yeah. is important. Yeah. Why would you want that? Yeah. Um, Finn Elliott says, advice for a friend who is wildly <laughs> over miles There's on only a lease. two things you can do. Three, I guess. You can buy the car. Buy it out. You can buy a beater. Yeah. To, to, <laughs> yeah. I know people have done that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> or you can pay. I mean, what are your options? You're yeah. screwed. You shouldn't have leased a car. Never do it again. Yeah. My, my old man uh, was given a company lease at his last like full-time job, and it was an A8. And they, yeah. it was, I don't know who negotiated this lease, but it was not, it was not realistic for their habits. <laughs> yeah. It was like a 336 or something, right? Yeah. And after three years, they had 127,000 <laughs> miles on the car. So he would have owed like. He could have. He could have bought the car 
and then set it on fire yeah. with no insurance and come out and better, come out better <laughs> than, paying the than paying the miles off. <laughs> <laughs> what was he th- why did he even accept this ridiculous thing? The company wrote the check. He didn't have to Yeah, person. but he wrote the check at the end. Oh, you mean the company no, no, wrote the check the at the end? No, no, the company wrote all the checks. The oh company my God. wrote the whole. So he just exploited the hell out of this. I, he didn't. In, it wasn't intentional. Oh like, yeah, I didn't. After the first year, he was at forty-four thousand miles. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> Whatever it was. Whatever it was. It was. Uh, it didn't seem like a. It didn't seem like it was like malicious. It just right. seemed like no. what the hell was anybody thinking? Right. You right, know, right. with this. That is. Un- what did he do? What do you mean? Well, did he have the company just buy the? I they, mean, it, they paid it off. They paid it off. They and paid the miles. The, they paid it off and returned the miles. Wow. Knowing how yeah. good your dad is at math, I'm sure he noticed what was happening, and he's like, "Someone's gonna get a lesson." <laughs> oh, there was three. a yeah, yeah. No, there was a deep case of the fuckets. It was a, it one. was the last car that he had. Then he retired. He was done, and he yeah. was like, "All right, <laughs> thank you, sir. Good night and good luck." <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't like any of these. You want to talk about Nantucket, Doug? <laughs> Nantucket, love Nantucket. Matt's been there as well. Uh, Jesse says, I have been there, and I do love Nantucket. Uh, Jesse says, I'm marrying into a big Nantucket okay. family, and you are my only point of reference. <laughs> how, how did that start, and why has it continued? I'll tell you how it started. We're going to disagree on this as well. We were living in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I, I, should, I don't want to alienate too many of my viewers, but I was not a fan of living in Philadelphia. And so what we would do is we would take trips anywhere else we possibly could <laughs> To get out of Philadelphia, and one of I those didn't, trips. I didn't love Philly either. I, it has it has its charms, but I don't. I didn't love it either. One of those trips was to Nantucket, and it, we it just it was the best place. I mean, we went to Maine, and we went to the Cape, and we went to Toronto and Montreal and all that. And they were all cool. I loved it. I loved New England. I feel like at heart, I'm kind of a New Englander. And Nantucket was just the best of them, and so we enjoyed it, and I've always stayed. And if you are on this year, I'll find me in Sconset. I'll be there somewhere. Did I, oh, I told you about the guy I met, right? I met a guy at the Newport Audrain who was on the Nantucket SWAT team. Oh yeah, you met uh, you met my, my buddy Travis Ray. Met? Yes. Yeah. Huh? He must do so little. <laughs> they had a SWAT event this summer. Yeah, Doug like sent me the article. Volleyball. Yeah, he sent me the article. <laughs> and I said and I said, if you go into any network in Los Angeles and with and your whole pitch, it's on a flashcard. <laughs> I have an idea Just, for I, a this show. Is what I, yeah. Two words. Nantucket, Nantucket SWAT. SWAT. Boom. <laughs> Nantucket SWAT is the easiest fucking sell. You'd sell that in an elevator in two seconds. Oh, that is it's so true. It's just Reno 911 with all white people, basically. Yeah. It's like that would be the easiest fucking pitch ever in a in an elevator. That is so true. <laughs> you know, it is interesting though. The, the year rounders, it's an interesting community, and in the off oh, it season, gets, it gets it gets wild. Nantucket doesn't get insane, but the Cape, there's a lot of drugs up there. You can yeah. imagine. I mean, yeah. a summer place that turn goes into the winter. The people who stay behind. It's, it's, the Northeast in general has yeah. quite a big problem with especially stuff. New England. Rhode the Island. people who are stuck on an island when it's snowing, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like, and anywhere kind of isolated up there, Maine and yeah. Rhode Island and New Hampshire. Those places are. People in the West kind of idealize like Vermont and oh, there's rolling hills and dairy cows yeah. everywhere. And go up there in the in the fall; it's gray all well, the time. Well, the brochure shows us that stuff. Right, it doesn't say right. in January. Doesn't talk about the heroin. Right. Come to Nantucket. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Purest yeah. heroin in the Cape, <laughs> right out of the tree. <laughs> Just like the syrup. <laughs> no, the, that dude, uh, a SWAT guy, was telling me telling me stories. He was like, yeah. "No, we actually do have." Some. He's cool. He's got an R8. He's got a stick. Yeah, R8. I was like, "You got sports cars on the fucking island." I went to a Cars and Coffee on Nantucket this summer. Oh, is that cool? Oh well, no. There's 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 an R8. <laughs> his R8. There's a guy with an NSX, which has the master's license plate NSX. Really. Isn't that crazy? Oh my god, that's like a fucking old money. Right. That's old money. There's a couple of us that have SUVs. You know, like I bring my old Defender out there. It must be all Wagoneers and Defenders, right? That's there was a guy this summer is. who had a Bronco body swapped onto a Wrangler, new Wrangler Rubicon. Whoa. So you saw it driving along, and it's a Bronco. That's interesting. But you go inside, and it's a Wrangler on the inside, and it's registered. And the proportions are a little off. You is, can, it, is it a 2021 Bronco? Because that would be great. <laughs> For that money, you could probably just get a fucking Icon. Yeah, I bet that's about you what know, he spent. But yeah. he would argue, hey, look, I got airbags and, you know, yeah, yeah. climate. I got the screen and all that. Wow. My better, a more f- modern driving experience, but I'm driving an old How interesting. There's no limit to what people can have on Nantucket, and so you see some crazy stuff. Yeah. Never seen an LMO2, though. Perhaps you would oh like to get God, one. And that would be a perfect Nantucket <laughs> vehicle, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be interesting. Be amazing. 
I had a the, the Nautica Villager right back in the day. I I got an over sand permit for the Nautica <laughs> Villager, and I fucking got it stuck in the sand, and it it died a, it died a death there. You're not supposed to get those for f- two wheel drive vehicles. <laughs> I know the person at the office didn't know what was going they on. They now will, will will like look at the vehicle. Oh, and make they sure. do. It, it depends which one. There's two permits, and the one that they put it on for you, yeah, they look. Oh, at the and time, it, they won't even put it on like shit. an Outback. They're like, no, not enough clearance. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. at the time, they, they, nobody the gave fun a is shit. Up. Yeah, exactly. This was like '97. <laughs> nobody cared. It. Yeah, no right. one cared. <laughs> That's different now. Yeah, it's like it's a cool place, man. I really like it. I'm, I think this summer I might try Martha's Vineyard because I've, oh. I've 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 never been. Well, I I just keep hearing nice things. It's closer. <laughs> it's the shorter ferry for sure. Oh, I don't. I go there from Greenwich by boat, baby. I'm, <laughs> oh. I'm whiter than white. Well, I take my. I don't want to get into this necessarily, but if you're going from Greenwich in a boat, you should be ending up in Nantucket Harbor. We did last time. I might take. I might do both. Well, you know? it was my dream to to like because growing up in Nantucket to see all those boats in the harbor, yeah. walking the docks with like my dad, yeah. like just looking at boats. It was literally like one day, yeah. I want to be staying on a boat in the harbor. I don't and know anything it was about so boats. So fun when I did, but I've had a few boat enthusiasts with me up there, yeah, and they walk through and they're like, "This is a." Yeah. You know, like we do at Cars and whatever. They're like, this is like, I don't know, these wood boats that are incredibly, I don't know anything yeah. about this stuff. like Hinkley's and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year, or I guess it was two years ago when I was there on the boat, they docked me. You know, my dad, he's got a really nice boat. Yeah. And I, it's amazing. It's a beautiful boat. It's 48 feet. And for me and my wife to live on it, it's like totally spacious and it's great, right? And they docked us next to like a 250 foot boat. And we're just like looking up like, fucking hell. And... All of a sudden, you I wake up in the morning and I hear nee! and I'm like, what the fuck? What is that? And um what what are they doing? They are craning a Mini Cooper oh. off of the roof of the boat God. onto the dock, and the guy just fucking drives it off the dock. One of the things I like about being there is there's no end to the insanity. Yeah. <laughs> and like I'm not like that, but I can see. And it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's so wild. cool to see it and wa- like, wow, okay. This is the new level of insane. You know, one of the crazy things that happened there two summers ago, you, most of the restaurants don't take reservations except same day. And so as a result, you have to stand in line outside the restaurant that day. Right. And there was a high school kids there. Yeah. Started a business of charging people in line to stand you? in line. <gasps> and so they, they, they one kid for, like, for 100 bucks, they would wow. stand in line, make sure you got a table and you could be off at the beach or whatever. That's, that's I genius. mean, that's so very then the smart. restaurant said, "We're not going to do that anymore." So yeah. they won't give a spot if you're paying a line stander. That's, <laughs> that's so the, funny. That's the level of insane. And, crap. That, and that's what Nantucket SWAT would respond to. Those <laughs> are the calls. Yeah. Yeah. The kid the is there, like, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm here. <They're> tackling him. <laughs> I once got I got I once got hosed by a line stander at the Nike store in Santa Monica. The only time I've waited in line for a shoe drop. Yeah. One Black Friday, like three years ago. Remember the DeLorean dunks? Uh, no, I don't the know what Nike about. DeLorean. You think I know dunks? about shoes. I don't know. I, I have no. Ca- it was a weird car shoe, so maybe you heard of it. Yeah. It was, whatever. The kid in front of me was a paid line stander, and he was about fucking this tall. <laughs> and it's like, hey kid it's like you're not wearing i know you don't wear a fucking 12 and he took the he took my size and he'd been standing right next to me all night you're kidding wait there's only one they had one size 12 and this motherfucker took it and he was a paid line stander (laughs) it was bullshit how do these people find these line standers they just find somebody it was the guy in front of him had paid it because it was one shoe per Uh, customer so there was one dude so did you buy it off that guy he tried to, f- it was $110 retail, and he tried to flip it to me for 500 right outside the door. Oh, what'd you do? Told him to go fuck himself. So you didn't get the shoe? Didn't How get How long the did shoe? you stand in that line? 12 hours. You, t- for 400 bucks, you gave up for 12 hours? <laughs> can you, can you look on, on any of those shoe markets, DeLorean, Dunk, what do they go for today? That's it. 800? God damn it. This was the worst mistake of your life. You could have bought the First damn off, shoe for the guy. Let me explain to you, this is far from the worst mistake <laughs> of my life. <laughs> I can think of 10 worst mistakes in my life there were right days now. in Philly, you know. I just told you about a fraudulent major service report. It cost me 10 I know, G's. but you stood in line for 12 hours at to the get t- this shoe, and you wouldn't pay $400. Now you could have doubled yourself again. No, that's my a time, fallacy. At the time, my time was not worth as much as it is now. <laughs> and also, in that first year... They were flipping for like two fifty. It's all I, I see that they're more now because shoes are more valuable. You now, hold but. on to things, you know. 
I also I there there was other one things that I should have paid up for and lost. Like I was bidding on uh, one of Anthony Bourdain's watches, which at the time I went get the fuck out of here. That if I could take myself back to that, I would have spent the money in two seconds to yeah. buy the watch. Yeah, yeah. I should I should have and I didn't. Yeah, it's and easy it to say that now, especially the in the world now that we're in. Yeah. Obviously with Anthony Bourdain, but with stuff becoming more and more valuable. Yeah. You should have gotten someone else's size in the line. And then flipped and, and then, then flipped them. it. Yeah. And then bought the one you know. It was not I was not uh, poor decisions were made. Let's just say <laughs> poor decisions were made. <laughs> it is sea of poor decisions. That was one. <laughs> Yeah. Right, okay. You want to get me something for my birthday, Dougie? Oh, get one DeLorean of those. DeLorean Dunk, oh, size okay. 12, to celebrate your success. <laughs> 40th birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Thank you. Are you, when are you, how old are you? 30, 37? I don't know. I'm gonna, 88. 30, you're 88? 33. Oh, 34. 34? Yeah, you're a Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. I gotta, I gotta make this last a little longer. It's okay. Yeah, you'll burn out in three or four years. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You know the cars are coming to my house now, so it's a little easier. Ah, I stopped, nice. I stopped all that. I just, with COVID, I couldn't go to the. De- you know, car dealerships are, to put it diplomatically, they're. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love working with dealers, but car dealerships. It's a very conservative industry, and they took a position on COVID that didn't align with my position on COVID, <laughs> uh, and so I, I largely had to had to stop working with so many dealers. Yeah, but you get press cars now. It's it's easier that way, isn't it's it? It's easier. I still don't feel ethically that it's as good, but. I had to protect my family. We were pregnant for like 18 months because all the miscarriages and pregnant women and the outcomes of pregnant women and COVID are not good. Yeah. And so we were trying to be really, really cautious. I understand your stance on press cars, but like it's kind, it is a necessary evil. Press cars I'm starting to soften on, partially because I'm doing it myself now. But, uh, <laughs> 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 but Something I will never soften on is the travel. I think that it is the most insane thing that the automaker buys you a round trip ticket, often in business class, to fly to go to this incredibly nice area. Uh, the WX one was at the Montage in Napa. Yeah. It's a place is twelve hundred, fourteen hundred dollars a night. Yeah. And you get up there and they pamper you, get you all these dinners, and then you you, you know you get all these excellent benefits you would otherwise get in this special place that you could never afford to stay in. And then at the end, oh please provide us an objective review of this car. Give me a break. I pay my own. Way to every single travel car that I review. I pay for my own rental car, my own hotel, my own flight, all of it. And I think that's the, the right way to do that. I mean, that's great if the return is there on the video. Right. You have it's to. It's a privileged you have position. To, it's a privileged position. Like, if you want to be like, if you want to be in the first group of people to reviews the car, which makes a huge difference yep. in your return. Yep. Right. Then you got to be where the car is You're right. at the time. You're right. But and I personally, with the the numbers that our shit pulls, it is impossible for me to justify. I would be ne- I'd be negative every yeah. video. I mean, if I if that was what I had to do. Yeah. And I can appreciate that not everybody that that people like Dan Neal who have a newspaper paying for it, or where if you're bringing in enough money that you can pay for it and it works out. I can appreciate taking that stance. That's an impossible stance for me to I take. I know. It's it's a privileged position. It's, and it's, I can say that I'd rather fucking not. Right. I don't want to go to I Portugal just, to drive something. Right. That's a right. waste of time right. for me. I, that's the other thing. It's like, geez. Like, really? let me have it for three hours in Los Angeles. Right. Please. Right. But the problem is that happens four months later yeah. sometimes. Right. And that I four agree. months can mean an enormous it difference it in does. our revenue. It does. I agree. And so that's the tough thing. But don't you therefore think that to an extent the automaker has control over your revenue in a way that you'd rather not have them you have? Know, that's the scary part. You know what part. I do every once in a while? I travel somewhere real far away, eat a fancy ass dinner and then just shit all over the car. <laughs> yeah. I, I you know, I've done that. Yeah. Not not just for fun. I've done it. You have. Yeah, I have. Most guys don't. I mean, there are a lot of guys you meet who will say whatever to make sure. sure because they're not you and I have audiences. Some of these guys are working for the yes. Rochester Daily Bugle yeah, yeah. and this is it. This yeah. is the peak of their life is sure. getting to go to Napa and drive the WRX and stay at this Montage for sure, and, and the least I'll do is tell the people to their face that I hate the car. <laughs> I'll tell the engineers like, listen, man, this thing is this is no right, good. right, right. You what know? do they say? I've never done that at an event. I've you know later usually had to have they, those emails. Sometimes they take notes. Sometimes really? they yeah, they don't usually get mad. I, I usually I usually can be pretty specific <laughs> right. if I don't like yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but don't, I don't know. I agree with your point. I just it it can be gratuitous. 
it can be gratuitous in yeah, ways and, that and it doesn't need to be. I will say sometimes these events aren't as luxurious, whatever. Yeah. But often, like, why is a WRX event at a hotel cost fourteen hundred dollars a night? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't sense. make any sense. No. There's there, that usually they try to put the event for the people watching at home. They try to put an event that sort of matches the theme of the car and yeah. the personality of the car. The only way that I can imagine that the WRX one is at a hotel that costs fourteen dollars a night is they're trying to buy off the people because it's a controversial car, or the PR team themselves wants to I stay. <laughs> think, I actually think it's the la the second half because right. they're there for like two weeks. Yeah, they're there for the forever. Waves of stuff, right? You know, when it's like. And when it's at a place where the roads are actually shitty too, like I've been on two or three events in Hawaii, and the roads in Hawaii <laughs> are total are trap, awful. Right? There's, There's traffic. no good reason to. Even the windy roads are bumpy as hell, and it's yeah. like, what the fuck did you? Oh, I know why you right. brought me because here. you live in New Jersey in North Jersey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and you have twelve waves of this press. Yeah, launch you got to be here for a month, <laughs> and if you're going to be somewhere for a month, it ain't going to be Florida. Yeah, you're going to do a lot. I think it's that we had a running goof because Porsche always came up with these fucking insane places. Yeah. We had a running goof that someone in the Porsche team was like fucking chicks like all over the world, <laughs> and just like, oh, he's got a girlfriend in Tanner Reef <laughs> or whatever it was. You know? I hate that stuff, and I agree with you. The time commitment for some of the ones I just don't do it. Anything in Europe, I don't do because yeah. I'm paying for it myself. But also, like, no, this is not going to occur. And I tell the automakers, Maserati MC20. Like, I want to review that car. I ain't going to Europe. Are this you coming to here? Uh, I, I saw that it's somewhere. I've been emailing back and forth. They're like, oh, it's, it's coming. Oh yeah, well yeah. Well, yeah. it was supposed to be two months ago, and then there, yeah. there was one, and someone crashed it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and then it got bumped. That's an interesting thing of access to see. You ever crash a press car? Yes, oh. I have. Wow. Well, yeah. What happened? I honestly and earnestly apologized fucking profusely. Which I, car was this? It was an Audi R8, and it was in Europe in the rain. Uh -huh. And I was really, really embarrassed. Yeah. Really, really embarrassed. I think about it every time. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that ever. Right. Every, it was really, really bad. Right. And it wasn't that bad of a crash, but it was still like right. bad, an enough, bad yeah. fucking enough where I was like, <sighs> yeah. uh, and, and I honestly and profusely apologized. Yeah. That makes and I sense. Was really, really. It's <laughs> tough. It's a tough thing. We would lose. When I worked at Porsche, we would lose cars at these things. You know where we'd really lose them was at the dealer launch. Oh, so you yeah. did the press launch, <laughs> yeah. and the press is problematic, but they're fine. Yeah. The de imagine car dealers. Yeah. They're showing up. The sales manager, who this is not a job that travels, so this is like his one trip yeah. of the year. You know, and he's driving the newest whatever on the track. Yeah. And he's you know, <laughs> it's a sales manager of a dealership in Florida. What do you think is going to happen? A lot of accidents is the yeah. answer. And I've heard stories of people who have really damaged cars and then kind of been very flip about it and yeah. like not even really apologized and not even been genuine and sometimes not even told people. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. crazy shit. Like yeah. at least I could have done was show a little humility. Right, you right. Know? Interesting. And yeah. it ultimately was, I mean, I don't want to say fine, but like it was fine. Yeah. I've reviewed other cars from that manufacturer well, since. It happens. It does. The automaker accounts for it. I mean, some, it's tough on that trip because then they're short a car for the remainder of it, whatever. But it happens. It was cold, raining on an unfamiliar racetrack. Yeah. You know, unfortunate sort of thing that happened. Yeah. But, um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I try not to. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, there's necessary evils in the industry and press trips for me, unfortunately. Although I prefer to just borrow a car for a couple of days in LA, right? Sometimes, if it's some new super hot thing, it can really be the difference between, you know, a, a few hundred and several thousand yeah, dollars. I, yeah, you're right. I you agree. Know? I agree. It's hard. Which to, is too bad. It is. It's just. It's. I wish that wasn't like the fucking way the world worked, right. like the way the way content delivery works. But right. What are you gonna do? Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't create the system. Right. You right. know. Yeah. Just try to be honest where I can and right, and like when they give us shit, like this all this like ridiculous swag, I give it away to fans on Instagram. I don't keep this stuff. Yeah, you yeah, know, same. Uh, all that kind of shit. None of that stuff. I'm involved anyway, in. you got how many? How many? You had one point one point two five <laughs> crunch bars. Give me a little fucking swig of one. You want of some of this? I here? just want a little break. A, break my off a piece of that fucking crunch bar. As usual, I work this the morning. Muffins. You like the, Yeah, I had. There was one time where I had those. There's I always one time come I here dug with a, like eight muffins. <laughs> <laughs> it was a busy morning, you know. I didn't have time to eat. Mm. Get some muffins. Thank you for coming to join us, Doug. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is my favorite thing to do. Always a pleasure. I'm not even kidding. I love line. coming on here. 
great law you're telling. Oh, I loved doing this. I'm so glad we did this in person. You're going to be the last person I see for the remainder of the year now. <laughs> I know. I know. COVID has become a thing again. I know. We're fucked, aren't we? Yeah. Most contagious disease in history. Right. No? That's what they're telling me. Most really? contagious disease in history. Yeah, the new so variant? Far. The new variant or Omicron. just COVID in general? No, Omicron. Most contagious disease in history. Well, you know... Oh, God. It'll Fuck never us, end. Right? It'll never end. So we just have to kind of get used to it at this point. I guess. Endemic? Yeah. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah. Just keep getting boosters. There it is. Well, since you'll be sitting at home for the next month and not going anywhere, <laughs> might as well watch All Cars Go to Heaven 3. Hell yeah. I'm watching it in a couple our, weeks. It's up on, up on our <laughs> YouTube channel. <laughs> I, loved, I loved the first two. They were fun. And the, this, the third one was really fun, too. We had a great time making it, and it's the best production value we've ever done. Our small but efficient team fucking killed it. And we can see the genesis of why you decided to get an E46. I, and I fucking finished it and came home and immediately bought an E46. <laughs> That's how much I liked my car. He's had an E46 for, like, years. and you, you, That didn't sway you. But you drive an E46 325i with probably station wagon with probably 200,000 miles on it, and that is the thing that pushes you over the on, edge. Uh, but it was because it was. I drove it on loose surface, and I was really sliding it around a lot. I, I never drove Zach's car like that. Well, you're going to drive your car like that? No. No, but I know what I can. <laughs> you, know what you, you know what he needs? An E46 325i station wagon, <laughs> 1,000 miles. But that's, I mean, that's how like dealership experiences work. They make the, they let you do a thing with the car right. that you won't do, and you're right. like, oh, I'm that's so the hot one. up, this yeah. is amazing. Land Rover, yeah. But yeah. I, I would say, in your defense, Matt, you also spent like a week driving it. Yeah. Like both for, on camera, and then we took it to dinner. Like you experienced... The amazing versatility. Yeah, it's an amazing car. We drove it to dinner one night, like, and I was like, "Oh, if this was my car, that would be kind of nice, yeah. actually, because it's yeah. the right size and it's yeah. like made. It, feels, it is the right size. It and feels it like it's so made solid. well. All those late '90s and early 2000s BMWs feel so every, every button, every oh, it's so nice. You know, I took the I had the E53 X5 shared the turn signal base from the 2006 Range Rover, and I had an E53 X5 turn signal stock installed in my 2006 Range Rover because I just loved how it felt. You know those those BMWs. Yeah. You yeah. know yeah, yeah. that it just it's perfect. It's got like yeah. a rubber kind of clunk, but it's yeah. A silent clunk, yeah. Like I when I was going back to high school, like my the richest kids our senior year got E forty sixes. Yeah. And when I the first time my friend let me drive that E forty six three twenty five I, I was like, Holy shit, this yeah. is made well. Yeah. I, th- even then, I was yeah. like, "This is like." Well, that was kind of a peak, though. Like they, yeah. there's, they have better tech now, and they're better cars for many reasons. But like, that was the peak of of you solid could feel. Yeah. yeah. And on this, in this, in in my shit box on the rally, I'm we're literally stage rallying this thing, on, yeah. and like not a rattle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? it was they amazing. were amazing. It was amazing. That's so yeah, funny. that's why I bought one. All right. You don't I don't need to tell you where to fucking watch Doug's videos, but I can tell you to look on cars and bids. Supposed, yeah. Look cars on cars and, and bids. bids if you want to buy or sell. And, uh, and if you wanna just if you're in LA and you want a hands off experience, you could drop ship at West Side Collector Car Storage yeah. and we'll photograph, detail, and submit and manage your listing. Listen to this wonderful offer. Yeah, buddy. We will do it. Do what's how many hours? Ooh, the Typhoon has 19 hours left and is still at 20K. It's ending tomorrow. You're going to go pick that thing. I, where is it? Oh, it's in Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Oh, boy. Salt. Rust <laughs> built. <laughs> so, no, it's completely <laughs> rust-free automobile. A lifetime California oh, car. There's some good shit on cars and yeah. bids right now. No, there are more and more. We're, there's a, we're getting some real wait stuff. A that second. 993 has no reserve. Oh, that's R- the RS6. Yeah. That Mustang 94 GT, Stroker V8. That looks like my car from high school. <laughs> there you go. That's it's, the same color, it's too. It's red. It's got Low a body kit G55. on it. Low mileage G55. You can't find those anymore. Yeah, buddy. There's a 22B replica here There's somewhere. Some we just sold it. We sold it today. Oh, sweet. S6 Avant. With a stick conversion. Those are cool. Oh, man. That thing is, uh, this Mustang looks an awful lot like my car from high school. You remember that? You remember those great oh, panel wow. gaps? Yep. <laughs> 144,000 miles, but but still looks uh, just like it looked when it came off the assembly line. The panel gaps were bad, but they're bad forever. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's that's true. That's it's a true. shit pile when it's new, but it'll be just this shitty It is forever. crazy to imagine that, that you know, we were just talking about how nice E46s were built. Those were the same era. I know. It's a different world. That was when I learned, because you had one too, about the R32, because I owned every awesome car built in the late 80s, Yeah. and you get an R32, you go, oh my God, this really is way better than everything yeah. else of yeah. this period, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's our show, folks. Thanks for joining us. We're back on uh, Wednesday. Adam Ferrara. Will be here. Wow. Uh, you know Adam? He's no. a sweet from top from Top Gear US. I, know, I don't and know, personally know the sweetest person on the world, even mm. by your standards. Oh, wow! Hi, Noodle. <laughs> Bye, everybody else.